sorry doktor, sekarang ada tujuh orang partisipan. So dan kita juga sedang stream di YouTube. Boleh kita tunggu dalam 2-3 minit? Okay, sure. Tunggu participant? Alright. It's okay, we, we just wait until a few more people join in. How many have registered for today's session? Hakim. Untuk uh, uh, for today's session, uh, we just open to the all okay. IUM community. Oh, okay. Okay, so oh, just waiting. Oh, doctor, if you want to start, uh, we can start, we can proceed now. Can start? Uh, okay. Okay, Bismillah. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Want to avoid interruption and please, sorry, and please register through I attend for attendem via our YouTube channel IUM MSG Competency Development for Playback Letter. Thank you, operation and attention, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to be moderate for this program. My name is Luman Hakim. On behalf of MSD Training, I would like to extend a warm welcome and pass the session to our speaker, Dr. Faridah Abdul Malik, for training mastering proposal writing. Without further ado, please welcome. Okay, um, thank you very much, Brother Hakim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Um, let's begin our session with uh, the recitation of Al Fatiha. Okay, so thank you very much uh, for being here. Um, so today you're going to be with me for the whole day <laughs> until afternoon uh, on mastering proposal writing. Yeah, uh, But um, I've been getting this intermittent breakdown of the um, internet connectivity. Is it because of my end or at your end. I'm not sure because uh, looking at the signal here, I got full signals. Can you hear me clearly, Hakim? Yes, clearly. Clearly, yeah? Uh, okay. Clear. All yes. right. So, um, Rabish Rahli Sadri Baya Sirri Amri Wahlul Undata Milisani Afkau Kauli. Okay, yeah? So, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Let's begin. Uh, allow me to share the screen.
Okay, so you can see on the screen, um, that is the topic for our today's session, Mastering Proposal Writing. And um, I believe, because this is the topic that has been given to me, I believe that most of you, uh, all of you here are interested to find out how to write good proposals. Yeah, And you are actually, in fact, have been writing proposals yourself because um, I think at the workplace, sometimes we have to write proposals. Yeah? Um, but anyway, uh, okay. Writing proposals are fun. Said no one ever. Okay, so we can see here, uh, writing proposals are fun or not? No one ever said that writing proposals are fun. Yeah, so I, I hope, um, I, I know, uh, I this is definitely true to me, okay, when, because I am now at the academic office and sometimes, you know, we have to write proposals, uh, for training, sometimes we have to write proposals to uh, be presented at DCM and Senate. It has not been fun at all. Okay, but because it's part of parcel of the job that we have to do, then we have to try to make it fun for us. Yeah, so that uh, you know uh, we will be able to come up with good proposals for our work, and that is the intention for today. Yeah? We are trying to look at proposals. It may not be fun. But as much as possible, we want to make it as fun as possible for the reader, the person who is going to read our proposals. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe when we are writing it, it may not be fun, but if it can be fun, then Alhamdulillah. But what is more important is to make sure that the audience, the recipient of our proposal, is going to enjoy reading our proposal not in the sense that uh, enjoy here doesn't mean that they are going to love they will be so uh, happy about it but make it easy for them to understand they make it easy for them to understand the crux of the matter what is it that you want to say here yeah what is it that you want to pitch to us what is it that you want to persuade us to believe in yeah so that is the intention of today's session inshallah Okay, so I think um, all this while we often see people uh, making a proposal of marriage, yeah, marriage proposal. <laughs> people, the man will get down on his knee and then um, will give a ring to the potential wife, yeah. Uh, so that is a marriage proposal. Uh, so I, uh, maybe you can recall how you did it last time around when you proposed to your wife or the wife when you propose when you accepted the proposal by your husband okay so this is um not exactly the same but something similar it is a mutual agreement yeah and um if you look at the definition okay this is the proposal a persuasive document that offers a solution to an identified problem or need yeah uh, let me just uh, a persuasive this is the important keyword here a persuasive document that offers a solution to an identified problem or need attempts to sell an idea a product or service or a new concept or plan yeah so that is a proposal maybe over here in uae we may not uh, need to uh, really sell a product or service yeah but definitely we have to sell an idea or a new concept or a plan okay and uh that is the reason why uh we often need to come up with a proposal so uh what does it mean uh when the proposal is successful yeah so the successful proposal persuades an audience to accept the solution offered and to invest in the idea product plan or service so uh, if it is a, a successful proposal, then it manages to persuade the audience to accept whatever that you are offering to them. Uh, so uh, we can see it uh, positively because when you write a proposal or when you submit a proposal, you are actually uh, presenting your ideas to your employers 
or to whoever that needs to be given the proposal to okay because uh, sometimes uh, for example if, if we are not happy at what is happening at our workplace okay rather than just complaining why don't you come up with a proposal to um, let your bosses know that there is a problem here and you're not there must be something done about it and you will suggest how to solve it yeah rather than just complain be more productive by coming up with suggestions and that can be seen as a proposal too yeah so it is a, it's a mean for their employees ideas for change which can be empowering uh, so if you use a proposal uh, correctly then it can be a means to empower the employees yeah okay so um this is the uh, general expectations of what technical proposals are okay because usually when we talk about proposals at the workplace it is always called technical proposals yeah um, maybe in our case it doesn't have to be very technical but it depends yeah because sometimes if we are attached with the itd or uh, what else yeah that requires more technical proposals then it can also be applicable yeah? um, but if you are in the academic office maybe it's not going to be that technical so uh, how does that proposal differ from other proposals so other uh, professional communications at the workplace yeah so basically uh, technical proposals should if you can see here the list demonstrate to appropriate decision makers that their needs will be dealt with yeah be, so when when uh, you are presenting the proposal it should demonstrate to your bosses the decision makers that their needs will be dealt with yeah that's why then they will be interested yeah? because you see that i am attending to your needs uh, in this proposal i am attending to your needs and uh, with regard to other professional writing proposal requires you to be more creative yeah? uh, it's not that you have to write um, story or things like that yeah because here there is a need for you to be persuasive rather than just informing yeah so um, proposal is a persuasive document uh, so it's not an informative document when it is informative document is easy okay you can be so straightforward just um, describe what is it just giving this information but proposal you have to be persuasive in uh, which means that you are required to be a bit more creative yeah in composing the proposal and and uh, sometimes because of the need to make it very persuasive then it allows informality and personal approach in style and tone yeah to some extent but um uh, you cannot overdoing it yeah uh, then because then personal and informality may defeat the purpose of writing the proposal then people say it's too informal too personal then it doesn't fulfill the requirement of it to be uh, an official document or a serious document yeah but uh, sometimes we can get away from being too rigid being too formal in our writing and sometimes if it needs be we can be a bit more uh, personal okay in style and tone we can we will look at the examples later but this is the general expectations of what technical proposals should be like yeah should be able to do uh, so in the proposal that uh, we have to keep in view the customer's convenience financial gain and prestige this one uh, with regards to project proposal or business proposal yeah or it can also be true to our kind of proposal because here we put customers but it can be replaced with our audience yeah the person who is going to read our our uh, proposal so we always keep the readers um, uh, benefit okay uh, in 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 writing the proposal so we have to show that that the, it is worth reading this proposal because we are making sure that your convenience your financial gain and prestige are being looked after in this proposal yeah? um, and then of course the proposal have to look neat and attractive 
And then when you are preparing the proposal, you also have to anticipate any possible reasons for rejection and provide suggestions for overcoming them. So uh, when you want to convince people, okay, you also have to be prepared with the counter argument, right? Uh, before they can object your ideas, they can say no, they can decline your proposal, then you already anticipate the reasons that people can say no to your proposal. And then you will have to be able to come up with suggestions yeah, before they say it to you. Uh, and, and because you have taken care of this, then maybe then at the end of your presentation or the proposal, they don't have anything much to argue with you anymore. Yeah? And uh, if you are writing it uh, in response to a request by somebody, then of course, you know, uh, you have to make sure that you understand what is it that they need from you, I mean, in the proposal. And you have to make sure that uh, you follow the requirements very meticulously. Yeah? So you have to make sure whatever requirements that they have set up for you must be followed very carefully. Yeah? Make sure that you don't leave anything behind. And of course, the last part, is to use plain, direct, and unambiguous expression. So uh, like any other documents that we write at the workplace, okay, we always go for using the plain, direct, and unambiguous expressions. Yeah, Because we want to make it, as I said earlier, and uh, uh, an enjoyable experience for our reader, for our audience. And you know, if we can, get our intention across in the most economical way, uh, then why not do it? Okay, so we are not going to show off with our language ability in the proposals. Yeah? Uh, so um, we have to make it as straightforward as possible in terms of our language choice. Um, so this is the general expectations of what make a good technical proposals. Um, all right. Okay, so that uh, what I have said uh, earlier is the um, general requirement of a technical proposal. Okay, um, maybe you already know this. Okay, there are a few categories of proposals. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, you have to write an external proposal or external. Yeah, so basically. Uh, when it is an internal proposal, it is a proposal written within the organization. So, for example, um, MSD is writing a proposal for uh, uh, for uh, for your staff, okay, uh, development, uh, improvement, and their career, uh, professional development, and then you write to uh, Madam Madam Sapo, yeah. MSD, who the person who is going to uh, decide whether the proposal should be accepted or not. Ah, okay, whoever is looking into that. But if it's external, what uh, when, for example, UIA is writing a proposal for an outside organization. Yeah? And then a proposal can be also categorized into formal and informal. Okay? So formal proposal, um, usually it's very formal looking when we look at it you already know it's very formal because usually it's quite thick okay and um it it has a lot more requirements than an informal proposal and uh, we will look at the differences later yeah um and uh what do you think in uia which kind of proposal are we writing formal or informal maybe not in your maybe at your offices respective offices do you have any audience at all today <laughs> formal or the formal what do you say sorry formal or informal Form formal. 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 Uh, okay. Formal proposal. 
Uh, why why do you say it's a formal proposal? Why do you think it's a formal proposal? Because for formal program. Oh, because for formal program. Okay. And um, okay, uh, I accept your answer, but I think later on we you we we will be able to find out the answer. Yeah, okay? whether yours is the right one or not. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so sometimes um, categories uh, proposal are this one, yeah, whether it is solicited or unsolicited. When it is solicited, uh, a person or a body, an organization requests for a proposal from you, yeah. So that's why sometimes uh, we call the term is request for proposal, RFP, yeah, request for proposal. So somebody wants you to write a proposal for them. So if that is the kind of proposal that you are writing, that is a solicited proposal. Yeah. And then you also have the unsolicited, which is the opposite. So, uh, it's written independently without a request. Okay. So this is just now when we refer to uh, empowering the employees, for example. Yeah. So. Uh, you see that there are problems and then you want to try to help the organization to improve it so you write the proposal on your own yeah without anybody's asking for it uh, so that is unsolicited yeah uh, which is also very good okay because it is written because you want to propose your ideas Okay, and also we have different types of proposal, yeah, sales proposal, research proposal, grant proposal, planning proposals, and and all of these um, uh, proposals are written for different purposes, yeah, whether you want to set product, whether you want to get approval for a research study, uh, research, this one is very tough, you know, to come up with a good one. Mm. You go through several processes, so several layers, of people evaluating it until you know they will decide whether it's a good one or not and also grant uh, this is what i find the most troublesome <laughs> trying to get money for people to finance to fund uh, my research uh, i've not been successful at this and planning proposal attempts to persuade the audience to take a certain action yeah. so these are the different categories of proposal um, okay. So um, the different categories of proposal, they have one thing in common. What is the one thing that all these different proposals have in common? It starts with a problem. Okay, because if there is no problem, uh, people will not come up with a proposal. Uh, to, yeah, usually, when we write a proposal because we want something to be changed, we want to improve a situation, okay? We want to improve a project, we want to um, improve a product, we have a better idea of doing something, yeah? So it's always for improvement. When it's always for improvement or trying to solve a problem, then that means we have to start with a problem yeah uh, so the most important thing before you even attempt to write a proposal you have to make sure that the problem that we are going to explain or explore in our proposal is solid okay so we really understand the 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 what the problem is all about uh, you know, because if we are not clear of the problem, how are we going to convince them that we have a solution to that problem? Okay, uh, so whatever that we are doing with regards to proposal, it always involves identification of a problem. That is the beginning of it. Yeah. Um, so uh, we have to start with a problem, and therefore we have to make sure that the problem is real. Yeah. So. You have to determine whether you have a problem or not. Uh, try asking yourself, yeah, whether at your workplace or the, at the, your respective offices, do, do you have any problem with regards to the work that you have to do? 
Yeah, we may have many, many problems, but here we are talking about problems at the workplace yeah, uh, that requires a solution, requires um, something to be done about it to solve the problem. Okay, so maybe you are not happy with the present salary scheme, for example. Yeah, <laughs> whether you are not happy with the requirement that everybody has to complete their vaccine before they can come back to work, whatever that one is quite sensitive. But but uh, you know, there must always be a problem, and sometimes the problem can be um, acceptable. Okay, you don't mind it so much, but sometimes there are major problems that make the employees unhappy working at the respective office yes they're not happy and then they will uh, they think that something can be done to improve the situation and therefore mm -hmm. you know you uh, want your ideas of how to improve the situation be known to the decision makers then you come up with a proposal mm -hmm. yeah uh, so how are we going to make sure that the proposal, uh, the problem is real and <coughs> we have already understood it, yeah? why it happened, what caused it, you know, what are the things that are involved and all those things. And um, these are the strategies that you can employ yeah? in order to make sure that you really explore the existence of the problem. So you determine whether you have a problem or not. If you do, define a problem or need and your purpose. Okay? Conduct preliminary research. Determine the scope and limitations of your study. Study here is not really the study uh, like uh, academic study, yeah? but in your understanding of the problem, yeah? the study in order to understand the problem. Identify the factors or subparts of the problem or need, brainstorm possible solutions, gather data to support the possible solutions. If possible, test and evaluate the solution. Okay. So um, before you can come up with a good proposal, you really have to understand the problem. Yeah. What about the problem uh, that uh, what caused it, you know, uh, what are the factors that are involved in this problem so you really have to understand it and therefore you try to think of okay if this is the problem how can i solve it uh, okay so when the problem is clear only then you can come up with a good solution if you yourself are not clear of the problem how can you come up with a good solution yeah so i hope you understand yeah in order to come up with a good proposal we have to make sure that the problem is real and mm -hmm. we really have understood the problem so that we can really explain it and be convincing that there is a real problem here okay and it is badly affecting our workplace or our organization or whatever uh, the the mental health of the employer uh, employees yeah for example and then you can then uh, suggest a solution to solve the problem. Okay, so now we come to task one. <laughs> uh, I just want you to think a little bit about the kind of, um, you can relate to the kind of problems yeah i've already talked to you that the importance of identifying determining a problem so just think about the workplace right now yeah, where your your respective officers or you are in general or whatever um involving our organization is there any problem that you think is worth uh solving mm -hmm. Anyone? It doesn't have to be very big, okay? So some little little problems can also be accepted. You, you can just share uh, your observation. Pardon, sorry? Mental health problem among staff. Mental health problem among staff, okay. Oh, it's a psychological problem, lah, because maybe ah. mental health will be quite, quite, uh, um, yes yeah yeah thank you brother yeah uh, that is very real yeah because we can see a lot of programs uh conducted in view of the mental problems yeah 
and and uh, especially now, right? After the um, epidemic, so we can see um, a lot of talks on mental health issues and all those things. Um, okay, so it's one good example of problems at the workplace. Yeah. Any other problems? Or you are very happy at where you are. You don't have any problems at all. Budget problem. Sorry, sister. What, what is it again? Budget constraint problem. Ah, okay. Budget constraint problem. Okay. Uh, can, can, can you give um, us an example how it has affected us? Okay, because I'm in engineering. Uh -huh. uh, Kuala of engineering. Okay. We have a lot of old equipment we have to repair and do some calibration. Uh -huh. But uh, we, we don't have any allocation mm -hmm. for to repair because uh, we only receive a very minimal amount, say around 50,000 for repair. But uh, some of our equipment uh, cost uh, 70,000 to uh -huh. repair. Yes, this is a real challenge. Yeah? <laughs> we have this equipment that needs to be repaired and yet we don't have the budget for it. Um, okay, so there is a very real problem as well. I think almost everybody is going through this problem. <laughs> okay, so we have mental health issues among the employees. Yeah? And then we also have budget constraints. I can ha I have a few more examples? There's someone writing in the chat box. Oh, okay. Let me see. Understaffing. Ah. Uh, Sister Aina, can you explain a little bit about what do you mean by understaffing? Elaborate on the problem a little bit. So this understaffing issues, where is it happening? No, <laughs> you don't want to respond to that. Oh, never mind. Uh, maybe if anybody knows of any understaffing problem anywhere, you can also chip in. Okay, what happened when we have this understaffing issue? What will happen? What is the effects of it? Is it a major problem or not, you think? Yes, major problem because there are many, many uh, work burden will, many work will, will burden on uh, the unsufficient amount of stuff. Ah, yes. Okay. So the those who are there will have to do extra work. Yeah. Ah, um, so it will be a lot of burden to this because in, in Barret, they shouldn't be doing it, but because we are understaffed and therefore you have to do it. Yeah. So this will lead to a serious uh, a host of other problems as well. Yeah. So the, the staff may feel uh, tired you know, demotivated, you know, and they feel that it's unfair and all those things, yeah, it leads to mental issues <laughs> at the end of the day. So understaffing is really not good, yeah? Okay. Um, okay, one, one last problem maybe, yeah, before we move on. The reason why I want you to think of the problems is because later on, I want you to go back to this problem that you have raised, okay, uh, and do some other tasks with it so even though you have not told me what the problem that you are thinking about but later on you have to have a problem in order to do the next task that i will be asking you to do 
Yeah. Um, so one one more problem, if you don't mind sharing. No? Do we have any? Oh, okay. Problem in understanding the work scope. Ah, okay. Then uh, sometimes the job scope is not uh, uh, properly defined. Yeah. So um, you may feel um, then people will complain that you do not perform, you know, but in, in actual fact, you don't really know exactly what you are expected to do. Yeah. Um, so then this is also a problem yeah, that has to be rectified. Yeah? So there are a lot of problems that uh, we that we are facing at the workplace. Yeah? And, and you have mentioned some of them already. And with this, you know that you, we need to do something about it. We have to try to solve the problems. Yeah? If not, if we let it continue on, then there may be a lot of other problems will, uh, will arise. And, and therefore, it has to put a stop or you have to try to improve the situation rather than allowing it to get worse. Uh, then you think about this problem, you understand the nature of the problem very well, and then perhaps you can write it and explain it to your uh, whoever that can make a decision on it yeah, and suggest your way out, how you think um, uh, the ways to solve it. Uh, so that is the proposal. Okay, so um, here, okay, what I have shown on the screen is, is an example of a proposal, yeah. So this one, uh, a proposal in the form of a memo, yeah. So we can see, obviously, this, uh, okay, if you are writing a memo, who is it for, usually? Memo is an internal correspondence or external correspondence? You write memos? Internal. Ah, yes. It's an internal correspondence, yeah? So, uh, um, we don't write memos to a person outside our organization. So, you can see here, this is an example of an informal for proposal, yeah? Um, because it is not a very serious looking because it comes in the form of a memo usually that is our routine correspondence yeah uh, so um so what i'm trying to say is that proposal can be formal and informal as we know it yeah and it can um occur in an organization okay both types of proposal can uh, be written in our uh, even though it's for the internal consumption yeah so in this one in this example we can see this is an informal proposal in the form of a memo because it is mainly for internal consumption yeah so uh, informal proposal usually within the organization for internal um, use yeah when it involves outside organization, obviously, it's very, very uh, formal. And but sometimes, even within an organization, the, the uh, formal proposal can also be written. Yeah, for example, if um, um, like students yeah writing their proposal yeah for their phd for their master that is very formal uh, okay at the workplace perhaps um if it, it depends on whether it's a big issue that require that involves a lot of money or it involves a lot of people yeah so it's a big project that you want to do then perhaps it has uh, to be very detailed and therefore maybe you'll be required to come up with a very formal proposal or there's um, 
technical projects yeah uh, that requires uh, a very uh, formal proposal because maybe it involves uh, contracts it involves you know legal um, agreements and all those things and then it will be a very formal proposal but i think um, in our day-to-day -day situation while performing our job maybe the nature of the proposal may not be very formal yeah so usually i think uh, if you look at the sample here, proposal for additional night custodian, yeah. So this one um, can be considered as informal one, yeah, because it's just within your own office. So here, just an example. So you can see uh, it comes in the form of a memo. Okay, uh, you can see the um, divisions of the the parts of the uh, proposal. Okay, so you have problem, background. Okay, this is the next one is the continuation. Uh, which one? Oh, okay, here. Solution, benefits, and conclusions. Yeah, so that is the first one. So um, these are the topics, the subheadings that have been used in this particular sample. Okay. You also have, um, okay, this is another one, okay, it may not be very clear, yeah, it doesn't really matter, I just want you to have a general impression of how a proposal looks like, yeah, so the first one is in the form of a memo, here in the second example, it is in the form of a letter, yeah, uh, so, um, the components of the proposal may be the same. You also have problem, solution, objectives. Yeah? And then, uh, let me see. Okay, this is slightly longer. Method and scheduling, maintaining the article, conclusion. Okay, here is a bit more technical um, because they put methods and scheduling. In the earlier um, proposal, it doesn't have that. Yeah. Uh, so I just want... Uh, to show you that um, if it is informal proposal, the contents are the same, but the appearance of the proposal may be different. Yeah, it depends on uh, which one that the organization is comfortable with, which is being used, yeah, comfortably by the workers at that place. Um, if you like to write it in this way, or you can sometimes have to write it in a memo format, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so um, we don't have to worry so much about the layout of the, um, the proposal. But what we have to be concerned about is the content. Yeah, the content, uh, if you look across all this curricul uh, curriculum, uh, proposal, the contents are very similar. There must be problem, there must be solution. Yeah, uh, it, that is definitely um, the, 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 the main items in any proposal. Okay, so it can be in the form of a memo, it can be uh, in, in a, uh, if you just want to change a venue, okay, so it's a, why you want to change a venue it can be seen as a proposal also, yeah, but that is very informal, you can just write it on a note, yeah, on a notepad, uh, on a small piece of paper um, to inform that there's been a change of venue because of this reason. Uh, Okay, so, okay, the proposal may look different from one another, but these are what they have in common, yeah? The first one is executive summary. Um, in the previous examples I give you, there is no executive summary, yeah? Um, but they definitely have introduction, body, and conclusion, yeah? Um, because the nature of the problem that they have have highlighted in the proposal is not that serious okay so and it's a very short proposal so we don't really need to come up with the executive summary yeah but sometimes even though it's an informal proposal 
the nature of the problem that we discuss in it may be a bit more detail, a bit more lengthy, has to be explained um, in more detail. And therefore, it may require you to write a longer proposal, a few more pages, yeah, like five, six pages of proposal, yeah, or eight to ten page long. Uh, and therefore, you have to write the executive summary. Yeah? Because the executive summary, this proposal, usually we are um, writing it for the decision makers, people who can make the, uh, decisions on the problem that we have identified and what to do about it. Yeah? And these decision makers, the audience of our proposal are usually very, very um, busy, right? They don't have time to go through this eight page long document that you have presented to him or her. So they just go straight to the executive summary, which is basically the, the abstract. Yeah, normally, when we read an article, we have the abstract. So executive summary is the abstract of a proposal. Yeah? Uh, so they just go straight to the executive sum summary to find the gist of the problem and how you um, put forward the solution to it. Uh, so. Um, Sometimes when the proposal is quite long, okay, the document of the proposal is quite long, then perhaps we have to come up with the executive summary. Um, so, so this executive summary is optional for informal proposal, yeah, but it is a must for formal proposal. But the introduction, body, and conclusion, well, obviously it should be there for all. Uh, for both proposals yeah okay so what is uh, the executive summary a concise uh, a concise version of the detailed proposal should include the essential information the problem the solution and the benefits of the solution um, um, so it can, should not be very long, okay? Sometimes it can only be in um, one paragraph, a short paragraph, okay? So this proposal, uh, uh, or you can just start the problem. The, uh, the uh, current MCO has seriously affected the mental um, status, mental conditions of many employees at IOM. Um, and then you explain a little bit what is the effect of that, yeah. And then you provide the solution. So uh, uh, the um, uh, masjid, yeah, Sultan Masjid IAM is going to conduct a two-day program on whatever you know, uh, ibadah camp. Uh, what what is it for? And then you can say what are the benefits that the uh, people, the participants will get out of it. So all this has to be condensed in one paragraph or two paragraphs. It depends yeah? if the detail, if the proposal is not very, very complex, then perhaps you can do it very briefly in one paragraph. But sometimes it can only uh, be explained well in a few paragraphs it depends yeah sometimes you need one paragraph to just explain the problem and another paragraph to explain the solution and another paragraph to inform of the benefits so it depends yeah um but we need the executive summary yeah in order to um, make it easier for the decision makers to decide because they don't have time to read through the lengthy documents. Yeah? So they will make up their mind whether it is worth reading or not yeah? by just looking at the executive summary. Okay, so um, after the executive summary, Okay, so these are the possible headings. Yeah, so you have the executive summary at the top, and what comes after that? 
Okay. Here we have the introduction, body, and the conclusion. And in the introduction, for the informal proposals, these are some of the possible headings. Yeah? It doesn't mean that you have to have all this all the time. Um, but um, these are what are commonly used, what commonly written yeah? in an introduction part, for example. So, uh, of course, the introduction, we have to be um you know we, we cut the chase we go straight to the point we sorry i always have a problem here so what is the problem address and the solution uh, we go straight to the point yeah so we explain about the problem in detail uh, so that's I, I said earlier it goes back to why there's a need for us to really understand the problem because we have to go straight to the problem and describe it well yeah so then why do we need to describe it well so that people can understand what is it that you are going through or what is it that you are describing here so when you understand it maybe people can have they can be they can understand the situation they can empathize okay because they really can feel the, the the problem themselves even though they may not be going through it but they can feel it okay they can understand it they can empathize with you and, and therefore you know they then they will be persuaded to agree uh, you know so that's why um maybe it's not very wrong to say that the success of your proposal depends on how well you illustrate the problem uh, okay because when people are convinced that there's that the that there is a real problem here and it is seriously affecting uh, this group of people uh, then they can feel it okay they feel you uh, and therefore there's nothing else to be done except to try to improve the situation yeah so uh, so that's why you know normally uh, when the problem is clear okay it's well described well uh, illustrated then normally the the proposal will come through successfully people can definitely buy the ideas yeah because it is very bad of them if they say no uh, okay that is the effect that we want to try to create um, when you write it, they cannot say no. They have to say yes only. Uh, so this is the part of the, the things. Yeah? yeah. So how are we going to make sure that the problem is well illustrated? Uh, so later on, we'll look at the strategies that can help you to, to really convey this problem successfully yeah, to your audience. And then in the introduction, we also have the objective, okay? and then the background, data sources, scope, and limitation. These are um, possible headings for introduction. And then we have the body. Okay? In the body, is um, going to detail out what is it that you have mentioned in your introduction. So uh, you say that you want to do something, okay? so you, you explain in the body how you're going to do it. What is the method they're going to use? What is the scheduling like? You know, uh, do you have the uh, qualified personnel to carry out the project, the program? Yeah. Uh, what do we need in terms of materials and equipment? Uh, so, what do you expect to get out of this? And then, uh, how are you going to monitor? With, if you need to monitor it, okay, feasibility. Um, uh, how likely is going to be successful? How likely is it going to uh, face problems? Yeah? So you run out feasibility study, for example. Um, and then what is the budget for this? <coughs> and then uh, why do we need so much money? Uh, do you have to justify? Yeah? So this all is going to be explained in the body section of the proposal. Yeah? And the last part is always the conclusion where you are going to summarize the key points okay and you will request for action so usually the request for action would be um 
when you propose, of course, you want your proposal to be accepted. Yeah. And then if you want to be accepted, maybe uh, you want it to be done in a certain way. Uh, then you request for action, whatever else that you need. Yeah. Um, um, so when it comes to the conclusion, of course, you cannot raise new things, okay, new issues and all those things. It cannot be done anymore. Yeah, that should be done earlier. Yeah? So conclusion, just reiterating the important points that you have highlighted and then try to also tell them what needs, what you want from them to do, yeah? what actions that you want uh, them to take if they agree with your proposal yeah so any questions so far okay Okay, just now, um, maybe I have already explained some of this, yeah, but here what I have on my slide is for the explanations of the table earlier that I have also looked at, yeah. So the in, in the introduction, maybe, you know, uh, as I said, you have to go straight to the problem. Uh, so we call it the problem statement part, yeah. So where you clearly specify what it intends to investigate, uh, what is the problem, um, and then elaborate the existing facilities procedure and the shortcomings arising out of the same. Okay, maybe um, uh, the present situation is like this. Okay, so what are the shortcomings of it? Uh, what are the problems that have arisen out of that? And then why does the problem exist? Uh, what benefits will be derived from the proposed project? Yeah. So that is the introduction. But, and then we have the objective, yeah. Um, it has to be clear also this objective, yeah, because um, if you have already explained your problems well, uh, but the objective is not very clear, okay, then it also uh, defeat the purpose, yeah. So you have to write the objective very clearly. So you have to really know what is the purpose of the proposal? What is it that you want to do? Uh, okay, what are you proposing? And usually when it comes to the objective, it will be written in the infinitive form. Yeah? Infinitive form uh, like this, yeah? to provide, uh, that is the example. So if you want to say to improve, uh, to help, um, if we are talking about the mental health situation earlier, uh, you have the program uh, to be conducted, the ibadah camp for people like uh, who are facing, undergoing this um, have mental health issues okay and the program the purpose the objective of the program is to um, provide um, spiritual support uh, um, to the, for the people who have uh, problems okay spiritual support or uh, to uh, whatever what is it that you want to give yeah? when you conduct the ibadah camp for them what is it that you want to achieve to um, make them feel that um, they are not alone for example yeah um, it is i cannot really think very clearly today yeah but in order for you to come up with a good objective you have to be very clear of the goal yeah what is it that you want to do or what is it that you want to achieve by proposing so this objective we can see it very clearly yeah because usually we have it in the infinitive form sometimes you also have them 
in numbers, yeah, number one, number two, number three, but not too many objectives because sometimes uh, when there are too many goals, then we may not be able to achieve the goals. Yeah? So we have the objective. Um, then sometimes, you know, we have to include the background. Yeah, so what does background refer to? Okay, so this one, um, it depends on the nature of the problem that you have identified. Okay, um, if the problem has existed for a long time, perhaps, you know, you want to look at how it has been in the past, why is it not um, um, put through, uh, you know, why is it still continuing and things like that, yeah, so you uh sometimes uh, when you are proposing a new ideas perhaps you also want to read about uh, what other people have written about it earlier you know um so to show that you are uh, well versed in the problem so you have understood the problem very thoroughly because you have understand you you understand what has uh, happened earlier yeah before uh the current situation and and this is the background any background information that people need to know okay in order to understand the problem better what has taken place earlier how was uh, uh, what happened in the past whether there's anything any project that have been done to try to correct the situation earlier and by showing this background and people understand okay you have um build this information from what you have researched in the past okay what you have researched but the background research that you have done has contributed to your understanding of the current situation so um, you include all this information because this information may be required also for the audience to understand the situation okay so it just want if you let's say you just want to um propose the budget okay uh, uh, just now uh, the problems at engineering yeah that you don't have budget enough budget to repair so perhaps you have to come up with the information when was the equipment bought purchased long time ago or how many years ago uh, you know uh, how much was it for and then whether you have um uh, look after the equipment well, whether you have any schedule uh, of maintaining it or not, what happened during the maintenance, uh, you know, all this information may be helpful, yeah, because you need all this information to really understand uh, why the problem is as is right now. Uh, so that is the background. Okay, so there is no specific type of information that you need it depends on the nature of the problem that you are describing in your proposal yeah uh, but oh, so but we have to have the background information to set uh, the problem that we are going um, to discuss eh? that is the setting for the problem that we are going to be discussing in detail okay and also in the introduction, we have the scope. Yeah, normally the scope is to define the boundary of the project. Yeah, because sometimes uh, the project, um, I mean the problem, may require um, a bigger scope. Yeah, to be really uh, soft. But sometimes it's not within your ability, capability to do so. So maybe you just have to to just choose a small part of it. Yeah, and, and therefore you have to be clear of the scope uh, of the boundary of the project or, or or the solution that you're going to or the or the problem yeah, that you are going to look at. So you cannot be solving the whole problem, but perhaps just a small aspect of the problem that is going to be looked into. Yeah. So so that is the scope. Uh, so you just define what is it that you're going to focus on yeah and you are not going to focus on anything beyond the scope that you have identified and also limitations of of the proposal of the project or the program uh, that you are proposing yeah 
uh, so limitations are restrictions over which the proposal has no control such as the non-availability of some classified information uh, perhaps you know it will be good for you to know about this but unfortunately it is classified and therefore you cannot access it uh, so whatever limitations here yeah, uh, perhaps you, you say that you wish you could do much in a greater scale but because of the budget constraint okay you are limited by the budget given to you and therefore you cannot really do much more than what you are suggesting okay that is the limitation <coughs> of the project so um we have to spell it out yeah because um if people can understand uh why uh, why are we doing it because we are constrained by certain things we are limited by certain things and therefore then that it makes it easier for them to really understand yeah that what is the focus of your proposal okay so just now um what i have uh, explained uh, some of the general descriptions of proposal that cover both okay formal and informal proposals in terms of the content what i have said about form uh, informal proposals are also true to formal proposals yeah but uh, if you look at what i have here okay how do they differ okay formal proposals may differ from informal proposals in the following ways okay so the tone okay sometimes because it is informal what is it okay because it is informal the tone can be a bit more um informal yeah it, we, because we are writing among friends so we don't have to have a very serious, very formal tone in our writing. Um, so, but, um, you know, maybe some of you already know when I mentioned tone here, what does it mean? Perhaps you have also attended many other trainings as well. Yeah. Tone in our writing, because we are talking about documents, uh, written document here, uh, proposal. When we say tone in our writing, how do we uh, determine the tone? What is the tone in our writing? Sometimes when you read something, it creates some emotional response, right? Yes, doctor. Ah, of language. The pardon, sorry. Through the usage of language. Oh uh, yeah, through the usage of language, yes. But what is the tone? The oh, tone formal. of our document. Formal and official. Sorry, sorry, tak clear. For, formal and official. Oh, formal or um, unofficial. Uh, formal and official. Formal and official. Oh, okay. That is formal and official tone. Um, how how do you know it's formal or unofficial? Through the use of the language. Yeah. So actually, um, you are right. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that okay, uh, when you read, you feel the attitude of the writer, right? Ah, yeah, that yeah. is the tone. Ah, that is the tone in our writing. Sometimes when we read something, we feel so not happy. Yeah, because sometimes we can feel that this uh, writer is so proud, very egoistic. Ah, you know. So, but through his writing, we feel that the attitude of the writer. Ah, that is the tone of the writing. Yeah, because we don't see this person writing. Yeah, we don't know this person. But what we have is that just what this person wrote on a piece of paper and yet it can create this emotion in us yeah we can feel the attitude that the writer 
is expressing through his writing. Nah. Okay, so that is the tone yeah, in our writing. Uh, when we speak, when we see the person face to face, then we can see the attitude from their action also, right? Uh, not just based on what they say, because the attitude, what we say may not be exactly the same as our attitude. Yeah, let's say when you come and say, eh, hey, wah, uh, cantik baju, uh, you know, you say cantik baju, but actually you are being sarcastic, you're, you're being, uh, you're, you are being, uh, you are, you, you, you are looking down at certain people, yeah, um, so that is the tone, yeah, that one we can feel it because we see the reaction, yeah? even though they say something else, but you can see, then you know the attitude of the speaker, whether this person likes your baju or not, even though they say, oh, cantik baju, ah, you know, so that is easier, but in, in writing, we can also feel it, so we call that the tone in our writing, the attitude of the writer, so when some Thing is a uh, very condescending people look down people writing as if the audience doesn't know much you know so the audience will not will feel um, will will feel offended yeah if you you uh, from the writing he can feel that as if you are telling me that I don't know anything about it uh, then the audience may be feeling very offended not happy then of course they just throw away your proposal yeah so tone is very very important yeah um so informal proposal as you rightly said yeah um the tone may be a bit more detached okay um it is not very informal in terms of because when it's informal it becomes more personal because you're writing uh, to your friend you know so the the tone will be a bit more uh uh personal cordial okay but when it is formal then of course it, you have to be very objective you have to be looking making it very formal okay uh, so then uh, because you are writing to the to the very important person in the organization of course you know you know your status so you have to understand your position who you are writing to and uh, and the scale of the proposal, the scale of the project that you are proposing. Um, just now when I say uh, for informal, maybe you can be a bit more informal, okay, a bit more uh, friendlier in your tone. Uh, but when it's formal, people expect you to be very serious, very formal, yeah? And then uh, for formal proposal, there are some additional parts yeah, that may be required, such as uh, glossary, appendixes, and transmitter correspondence. Yeah? So we'll look at it later. Uh, so there are additional parts to the components that you have to prepare yeah, when it comes to formal proposal. And usually formal proposal, it, because it is very complex. Yeah? Complexity of the outcome, such as the construction of a new building or the two billion purchase of a jetliner. <laughs> of course, when it comes to proposing this kind of things, okay, construction of a new building or the two billion purchase of jetliner, then of course, these are very formal proposals. Yeah? Then it has to uh, look it, it has to appear to be very formal. Yeah? So this all can be achieved through the proper language. Yeah? Uh, uh, well, one of the ways to achieve it is through the proper language usage. But of course, there are also other elements that play a role in making it very formal. Yeah? But I think uh, the most important component would be the language aspect. Uh, hopefully, we'll look at it um, later. Yeah? So we know it's a formal proposal when it's very thick. Usually it is bound in many copies. <laughs> uh, if you are going to be involved in writing that, obviously you have to make it very formal. Yeah, You have to use the appropriate tone. Okay, so these are the parts of a formal proposal just now. Uh, we have executive summary, introduction, body, and conclusion, okay, in our informal proposal. 
So now you have the additional parts. We have the letter or memo of transmittal. Yeah? We have the title page. We have table of contents. We have list of illustrations. Um, then executive summary, introduction, body, conclusion. And then we may need to have a glossary section, appendix section, and work cited yeah? references um, that you have used in order to come up with the document. Yeah, so a lot more items that you have to prepare when you come up with a formal, formal proposal. Anything that you want me to explain? Okay. You know what a letter of transmittal is? Would anybody like to guess? If you do not know, maybe you can guess or you already know what it is. No idea. No idea. Uh, uh, I think this is also a problem with our students. Yeah? Uh, I think last year, um, a report from the carrier unit, they were saying that uh, IIM students are very bad, you know. I think you will be able to guess what it is after listening to me, this story. <laughs> uh, they say uh, this one with regards to IIM students applying yeah, for jobs uh, or when they send out their resume. Um, they just send out their resume. Um, uh, attach is my resume or that is considered very good already because sometimes they just send the resume without any information, without any anything to explain what they have done. Okay, if you were the recipient of that resume, okay, uh, so the student sent the resume through email, okay, he just sent attachment without any explanation or simply uh, stating attached is my resume and full stop. How would you feel if you were uh, the HR people uh, in uh, in apa ni, Shell ke ataupun you know Petronas ke you know where this student is trying to apply for a job from? No chance for them. <laughs> no chance for them. Why? Huh? Because they need to explain what they are sending. Ah, yes, very good. Uh, of course, you you feel apa ni budak UIA kan? They don't have manners, or you know, uh, it reflects on um how bad they are. I mean, it doesn't reflect their professional attitude. Yeah, they don't know ke how to, to apply properly. Ah, uh. uh, sorry to interrupt. Yes. Uh, the same the same experience goes to me also. Uh -huh. when I uh, will, be, will be read this application for internship student uh, uh -huh. for last, last two or three months. Yes. Even the email, even there, there is no uh, title for the email. Mm. <laughs> so untitled email, just yes. uh, simply just attach the resume and just uh, and, and that, that is. <laughs> mm. So so what do you do <laughs> with that email? <laughs> we just we just accept because uh, our director uh, asked to accept. So. We have no choice. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Can, but you are not very happy about it, right? Yes. yes. Uh, uh, you, you know, uh, first we feel that they, are, they don't have adapt, you know, because when you are asking people to do something for you, of course, you have to be polite. You have to ask it properly. Yeah. And yes. how can you do that? By explaining what is it that uh, one of the things that you can do is by explaining what is it that you are sending. Yeah. To them that you are emailing uh, so uh, okay so that is the situation how is it related to the letter or memo of transmittal here so, ah yes very good ni siapa junita ke <laughs> oh ni kalau junita ada face to face ni saya bagi coklat ni <laughs> Thank you for responding. Uh, so, uh, yes, it's a cover letter. Yeah, it's just a, a different name for a cover letter. So, memo of transmittal. 
So, uh, of course, because it's a very formal document, you know, so at the, the, the first page of that document, you are going to have this, yeah, whether it's a letter or a memo of transmitter to explain what is the document that you are submitting, yeah. So, that is what it is, yeah, so it's, it's a cover letter. <laughs> so, when um, the students, actually in SAPAD, we're also teaching the... Um, uh, EOP, yeah, English for Occupational Purposes, where we will tell them how to write good resumes and how to write good job application letter. When we also told them that when you send out your email, please make sure that you have a letter of transmitter or cover letter for your resume. Um, and then uh, it cannot be uh, simply please accept the resume attach or attach is my resume for your further action that is not enough yeah so you have to explain a little bit more about the document that you are sending okay we will look at the memo of transmitter later okay the example and then of course the title page table of contents uh, all those things yeah, that we have to have okay so this is a memo of transmitter an official greeting and an introduction of the document yeah uh, in this case is the proposal to the reader begin with the purpose the fact that you are submitting a proposal okay uh, please uh, accept the proposal from our company on uh, whatever okay uh, if it is a uh, in response to somebody requesting for it or is it um, initiating the proposal on your own okay so you explain whether it is a response for a request or is it you just submitting it yeah on your own okay and then you note areas of special interest to the reader perhaps you want to highlight to them yeah uh, that in the document what is it that you want them to pay special interest to you know what aspect what highlights that you want them to to must make sure that they look at yeah or they they get uh, so this is what you can indicate in your letter of transmitter and then uh, the last part would be to thank the audience for reviewing the proposal yeah you may offer to provide more info or answer questions so uh, finally after you have highlighted what is it that you want them to focus on or to pay attention to then you can say thank you uh, for spending time you know looking through your documents so it's a, just a short letter or a short memo yeah, to explain your documents um, okay so this is the example yeah this is a memo a memo or transmittal a tra proposal for improving exterior lighting at Eastbrook. I am submitting for you review. Uh, uh, I'm submitting for your review my department's proposal to upgrade the exterior lighting system at Eastbrook Shopping Center. This document responds to our October tenants meeting and subsequent discussion with you regarding safety on the property. All special notes. Uh, these are what you want them to focus on. Yeah, to to be highlighted. On special note are the following sections addressing questions you or your our tenants brought up. Okay? And then thank you for reviewing our data and suggestions. We look forward to your response. If you decide to accept our proposal, we are eager to implement the needed changes. Uh, uh, okay, or uh, you are welcome to contact us at this number if you need any further clarification. Okay, so for the students who are writing their uh, sending their resume, okay, so they just say, um, uh, here is the uh, resume, uh, which is um, in view of the application, job application uh, for the position of whatever, whatever, okay. Um, as you can see, I uh, maybe for the student, maybe he just want to highlight what are the uh, suitable what what do they have to offer uh, the company in order to be a good applicant for the job yeah so you can see that i am very well versed in uh, 
uh, Linux or, you know, I'm very good at um, English and Mandarin. Uh, so usually these are the things that they want to highlight to pick the interest of the reader that you are a suitable match to the job that they are applying for. Yeah. So, so it depends on what is it that they want to highlight to the audience. So that is what they are supposed to be doing when they send out the resume. And then the last part will also be the same to thank the reader, the recipient. Yeah. So um, this is what they need to do. So for example, for the internship just now, okay. So perhaps um, you know later in Che Nazri Nazrin kata di tu. Yeah. You can also tell the the student, okay, uh, before you send out okay. anything, please make sure that you explain the document a little bit. Uh, don't just yeah, because, simply uh, send you. it out without any explanation. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, um, that is the letter of transmitter. Okay, what is the time now? 10, almost 10.30. You need a uh, two minutes uh, break to stretch out or to get yes. some water. <laughs> okay, uh, 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 three minutes uh, break. We come back at 10.30. Yeah, so now 27 past 10. Just a short toilet break or whatever.
Okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's already 10.32. Okay. Are we back? Are we still here? Yes, yes. <laughs> Insyaallah. Ya. Hakim, I really cannot see people ya. Well, I can see my audience. Oh, can see. All right. But when I use that grid thingy, then I cannot see some parts of my uh, slides. But perhaps I will not. Uh, never mind. How many do we have? How many? Customers do I have today? Only 16. <laughs> and thank you for coming. Yeah, I really appreciate it. If not, I'll be talking all by myself. Okay, so uh, just now we have a look at the general uh, information about what proposal is with regards to uh, its position uh, among uh, professional correspondence that we have to produce in our workplace, okay? We have also looked at the um, informal proposal and we'll also look at how they are different from the formal proposals. We have also um, expressed the need to be very clear of the problem that we have identified Okay, in order to be convincing in our proposal, yeah, because proposal is mainly a very persuasive document, yeah, it's not an informative document, it is persuasive in nature. So, in order for us to convince people, we have to be very persuasive, very convincing. Yeah? And what I would like you to to do next, okay, is to do this task too. Yeah, I'm going uh, to share with you a text, okay, and try to see what are the elements that make it persuasive. Yeah, um, of course, the text is going to be very persuasive. I hope to you, okay, you can <laughs> see that it is persuasive. And in this uh, particular instance, the writer has employed a lot of um, elements, you know, a lot of uh, tricks to make sure that it is uh, persuasive. Yeah? So I would like you to go through it and see what are the strategies that have been used by this author, this writer, uh, to achieve that persuasive elements, to convince reader to agree with him. Yeah? Are we ready? Yes. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. This is the text, but this uh, there will be a continuation to it. I cannot fit it all in one page. So uh, you, you can see call the topic. The title is calling all sleepy heads. Okay. Let me just read it maybe loudly so that you can hear and later you can scrutinize the content. Yeah? Sleep is important. Nobody fully understands why we need it. But scientists think that the body uses the time to recover and to repair damage. When we fall asleep, our heart and breathing rate slow down. Muscles relax and our senses rest. If this is the case, are you giving your body enough rest? Okay. Lack of sleep means that the body and brain do not work properly. If you don't go to bed at a reasonable time, you will be sleepy in class and not learn so much. Tiredness means you may not be able to think clearly and you may also be a danger to other people. Accidents can happen. You will lack energy and even playing becomes too much of an effort. 
Is staying up late really worth it? There is some truth in the old saying, early to bed and early to rise makes us healthy, wealthy and wise. Next time you start to argue about your bedtime, remember your body needs a break. Okay? So uh, basically, uh, the article is asking you to To have sleep a rest. Early. To sleep on time. Uh, sleep to early. sleep on time. To have enough rest. Okay. Um, so just from the first listening to my reading earlier. So do you think that you are convinced that you need to sleep? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, not, not, not to sleep now. <laughs> <laughs> but let's say you have problem yeah? but most of people will understand the need to have proper sleep or enough sleep right but i think this is more suitable for students you know uh, but anyway um it's supposed to be persuasive okay so sleepy heads here so you can see uh, <laughs> that person is uh sleepwalking but anyway Okay, please read it, then I will move to the next page. Okay, so what is the element of persuasion here that is being at play, is being played out to create that reaction in you? Uh, okay, so that is basically uh, what I would like you to be looking at. Yeah. Okay, so that is the first page. Are you done with this first page? Yes. Okay, move to the next one. Okay, and the last one. Okay, so um, first you have to ask yourself whether uh, this writer has convinced you to have better sleep or to make sure that you have enough sleep. <laughs> are you convinced or not are you persuaded or if uh, you are not completely convinced but can you see the reason why this person is uh, proposing that you have enough rest okay uh, first of all uh, the the writers uh, state the function of sleep and then he state that uh, if we don't have enough if we, if we don't get enough sleep uh, we will face some consequences so uh, it will make uh, the reader uh, think twice if we not getting enough um, sleep or break yeah Ah, yes, very good. Yeah, so the, the, the writer said, okay, this is what happened if you don't have enough sleep. Yeah, okay. Um, so if you don't want that to happen, uh, might as well sleep well. Okay, there is, so meaning he comes up with enough facts yeah, to show that this is the outcome of it, yeah? it implication when you don't have enough so it provides fact it, factual information to convince you yeah okay uh, anything else
that's all that I can think. Okay, thank you, Hazik. Uh, um, and yeah, and anybody else? Hi, doctor. Assalamualaikum. Yes. Uh, my name is Norlinda. Uh, uh -huh. For me, it's not very convincing uh -huh. because uh, for me, if I would, uh, if I convince that sleep is important, I would like to look at the uh, study or research done saying that um, uh, not enough sleep is hazardous to our body, rather than you know, you know, just say like you know, all all saying something like that. So uh -huh. I would like to, uh, to go or to look at the like a research saying. Um, you know what happened to our body. You know if 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 we have um, lack of sleep, stuff like that. Thank oh, you. Oh, okay. So you want to have statistics, or you want to have experts? Um, yes. Uh, event, uh, experts uh, opinion on it. Right. Right. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Uh, there's no experts opinion has been cited here. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, but scientists think that the body uses the time to recover and to repair damage. I would uh, like to have like, you know, um, if, if they cite a uh, scientist that uh, think that the body uses time to recover to okay, repair okay. damage. So um, cited by uh, Steve et al. 2019, for example. Oh, okay, yes. So you want to have uh, references. Who yeah, says this? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So that is also a good, um, good um, highlights yeah from you, because uh, we want to make sure that it's well supported by facts. Yeah. And you just making a claim here. Where is the evidence? Uh, that is what you are saying, right? You need evidence, and here we don't have enough evidence. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Thank you for that input. Okay. So you are not convinced, yeah? But here, because you see, it is not really a very serious tax. So you can see the, from the picture of that sleepwalker. <laughs> uh, so it's supposed to be quite funny also. Yeah. So of course, in actual uh, document, if you're writing a proposal, you need all those factual information to support your ideas, to support your argument. Okay, but here, when when we say, when we fall asleep, our heart and breathing, okay, I want you just to look at this particular sentence. Yeah? When we fall asleep, our heart and breathing rate slow down, muscle relax, and our senses rest. Okay, what is the effect it has on you when you read that? I'm convinced, actually. <laughs> unconvinced uh okay no, no, so, i'm convinced i i am convinced oh you are convinced okay why 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 are you convinced because uh maybe because from personal experience also ah okay because here what the writer has done is that when we fall asleep our heart and breathing rate slow down okay uh, are you are you, are you relating it to your own heart rate uh, yes. Uh, yeah, we, we can relate to it uh, because it sometimes happens to us. Uh, uh, so when we fall asleep, our heart and breathing rate slow down, muscle relax and our senses rest. So these are talking about uh, our senses. Okay, so this one, uh, when we talk about senses, we it, it creates that effect that the audience can feel it also even though he is describing it, but we can also experience it. We can feel it as if we are feeling it, as, as if we are going through it, yeah? So this is uh, another thing at play here, trying to stir your, your, your senses, yeah? To feel what is it that is being described here. So it is getting you involved. Uh, so, so that is the reason why, uh, you know, uh, some of the ways to make it uh, persuasive is to get your audience to be involved with your description. They can feel it because they are also going through that experience. So you, you, you get the, their senses to be active, to be, to be uh, doing things yeah, while you are reading it. And then if you look at the last part of all the pages earlier yeah if you see if this is the case if this is the case are you giving your body enough rest so this is a question what kind of question is it why why what is the purpose of asking this kind of question
to to make us think ha it, does the writer wants you to answer this question no, i think think about whether it's a correct or not ha just want to get you to think about it yeah and yeah. perhaps answer it yourself uh, this is what we call rhetorical question yeah i mean you don't really need to to answer it clearly i mean to answer it out loud uh, out loud but you ask yourself okay if this and then you see uh betul ke tidak are you giving your body enough rest uh, am i giving my body enough rest uh, you can't help but to ask yourself yeah? so think about what you are doing with regard to sleep here huh? So the, the the writer is asking you to answer this question yourself, yeah. And then uh, that is what also one of the strategies, yeah. We are asking this question, um, so that the reader will ask and they can realize at the end that oh yeah, I am not giving my body enough rest actually. Uh, yeah. So we are creating that effect on our reader so these are some of the elements that is being played here you know to create that uh, persuasion in the reader uh, maybe it worked out well for some but some of you were not uh, were not um, convinced yeah uh, but my intention is to show that these are some of the elements that the writer can manipulate yeah so we the writer of the document can use all these strategies to 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 create to stir that emotion in our um, readers so it's the same okay uh, the body and brain do not work properly do you want your body and brain not to work properly of course you don't want yeah so the the, the uh, like um uh, like stressing you know, this is the bad effect of not having enough rest. Uh, if you don't go to bed at a reasonable time, you'll be sleepy in class and not learn so much. Uh. So all the negative consequences of not having enough sleep, all these implications, you know, uh, that will affect you negatively. Tiredness means you may not be able to think clearly and you may also be a danger to other people. Not only is doing bad to yourself but you're also a danger to other people huh. accidents can happen you will lack energy and even playing becomes too much of an effort is staying up late really worth it so again the same question is being asked is it really worth it after i have you know uh, i have explain it well enough here long enough to see the all the serious the negative implications of not having enough sleep uh, so go ask you the same question again is staying up really late really worth it uh, so that, then finally there is some truth in the old saying early to bed and early to rise make us healthy wealthy and wise yeah? next time you start to argue about your bed then remember your body needs a break so anyway uh, this is just uh, um, a, a fun text you know to, to show you that the writers is um, the one who is in control here when you're writing any document you are the one in charge okay so you can manipulate the language uh, the style the tone of the document to achieve your desired goal what is it that you want to achieve so um, if uh, you know by this you can be convinced that you definitely need to sleep more you can understand the reason why we have to have enough sleep then you can say that this document has uh, succeeded okay in achieving its goal uh, because um, you know you have agreed you have finally agreed what he is stating in this text is actually quite true and you can relate to it and you can now finally see that after this you are going to make sure that you have enough rest if you have already not done so okay <laughs> so these are um, some of the things that we can do yeah, with the, the the way we when manipulate in the language yeah, to to create that desired effect on our audience um so this text is just a beginning <laughs> to what we are going to be looking at after this yeah 
Um, anything people would like to add to comment so far? But usually, okay, uh, just look at uh, maybe not the situation where uh, at the workplace. Perhaps if you have children, yeah, if you have a brother, sisters, um, <coughs> I'm sure, you know, many times they have persuaded, persuaded you to do something or to buy something for them or to agree with whatever that they are trying to pitch you with, okay? Um, what are the strategies that they normally use? For example, uh, if you have children, they want extra pocket money. How are they going to persuade you to agree to depart with some more money to be given to them? Or if your children don't want to go to school, <laughs> or they want to buy a new computer, a new handphone, but you don't want it. But how are they going to argue with you? Usually, what are their common strategies? They will cry. <laughs> oh, cry. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry, they cry? Yeah. Okay. If a little, uh, if still little lah. But if let's say, young uh teenagers probably they will list out the purpose why they need this, uh -huh. and to do what and all that. Uh, That's what I think. <laughs> so they are, uh, uh, they are well prepared. Yeah, they come up with all the 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 bullets. You know, so that they can use. <laughs> So if they are small, they they cry. Uh, so when they cry, that is emotional blackmail. Okay, because that is also a good strategy actually to be convincing, because um, you they 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 are actually um, causing a lot of damage effect. You know because you they cry, so you, you can't help but to feel. Um, sympathetic, you know. <laughs> sometimes, you know, sometimes you get annoyed because of the cry. But that is one of the strategies that they use, right? Huh. They 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 play on your emotion, huh? Because you sayang your children so much, then you don't want them to cry, and therefore you will give them whatever that they are asking from you. You know, um, your your teenage girl maybe. They are better prepared. They know that your mother will say no without any proper justification. So they will come up with all the justification behind their, their wanting to get a new phone, for example. Um, anything, anything else that, you know, they can use to persuade? Usually, uh, what is the strategy? Usually, they are actually causing, um, they are stirring the emotions. Yeah, they are trying to um, touch our emotions, our our feelings, yeah, our love. Uh, so that are all the emotions that we have for them and this is the easier way easiest way you know to get at what they want you know, usually um because we love our children so much and, and and sometimes we don't have the heart to say no to them okay uh, so so they are actually attacking our heart <laughs> in a way yeah so and and usually they are very good at that and most of the time they will be successful yeah but of course uh if the request is reasonable yeah so uh, what i am trying to say is that uh, that effect is the easiest to create yeah so does that mean that we should also create that effect when we are writing our proposal to create havoc havoc to that person's uh, feelings and emotion what I'm saying, havoc here is is not really havoc, yeah. But but we we take advantage of of the kindness, of the love, of the feelings that they have, you know. 
the, the, the human nature, human desire, that is the emotions. Uh, should we also be um, exploiting this when we are writing our proposal? What do you think? I think if we can persuade uh, the approver and by, by, by making them understand why why we are doing the proposal for, mm -hmm. I think that will be high chances for them to approve our proposal. Yes, uh, uh, so they have to understand, right? That is our, our objective, to make them understand. How are we going to make them understand? By giving uh, clearly defined the purpose. Uh, okay. And if let's say there's a situation, for example, like if you were purchase a new item, uh, such as maybe equipment, then, uh, then because the equipment is uh, already obsolete, then you can mention in the proposal as well to make them understand why. Maybe because uh, if the equipment is obsolete, we cannot do our uh, work properly, something like that, so that they will know the situation. Oh, okay. Uh, that so, is what I believe. Okay. So, uh, are you going to convince them by providing facts to support? Yes, facts and also uh, describing the the how to say the hardship that ah, the staff uh, yes. will face for the situation. Yes, it's it's very good that you mentioned hardship. Yeah, so hardship. When we talk about hardship, actually, these are all very emotionally laden words yeah when we describe hardship how because it it stirs the emotion in us yeah when we can feel the hardship uh. so here uh, indirectly what you are saying we can also employ the strategies that our children may be using all the time in our uh, coming up with the proposal yeah we can also be creating havoc to somebody else's um, emotions and senses in order to agree with us yeah. Uh, so this is actually a, a good strategy as well. But of course, it's not the only strategy that we should be employing. Yeah, there is one of the ways to get the audience to agree to be convinced of our ideas because we will describe the hardship. So when you are describing the hardship, you know that you know when the the penama, let's say for example the photocopier, you know, so uh, to just print three pages it will take like you know half an hour to wait until the the machine gets warm up and all those things okay uh, which you can uh, this will um, so how um, the effect of having to wait for a long time you know uh, so you are actually also um, trying to tug at their heart string you know to to, to get that effect so this is one of the things okay we can also be using this emotive uh, language uh, which you know that will 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 relate directly to our emotions uh, but of course uh, we cannot just try to convince our audience with just this as our um, as our weapon yeah our strategy that is one of the ways that we can use uh, but to be convincing, you need much more than that, yeah? Okay, so uh, what else can we use okay, to make sure that our arguments is strong to be able to convince people? Uh, that will get us to my next slide. Okay. Okay, so I do not know whether uh, you have come across this, yeah, but Aristotle's um, arts of persuasion, when uh, we look at persuasive speech, yeah, all the orators, all the good, if you look at all the good speakers, all the good orators, um, what do they have in common? The good preachers as well, yeah, um, they are very good 
because I think they are skilled at persuading people. Yeah? And this is a tradition that has gone back. I, I'm not quite well versed in the Islamic tradition, but if you look at uh, in the past, when during the time um, of Aristotle, you know, they look at, uh, especially for public speaking. Yeah? So in the past where people speak in public and how they will try to persuade people, it is a subject that they have to learn because they are looking at philosophy and all those things. Yeah? So it, it, it was a major discussion during that time. And uh, according to Aristotle, yeah, uh, we he came up with all these uh, three uh, appeals. Yeah? There are three ways of try of making people be convinced of our ideas of whatever that we're trying to do. Yeah. So if you look at uh, the screen, you can see the first one is ethos. Yeah. Ethos, sometimes called an appeal to ethics. Ethos uh, is used as a means of convincing an audience via the authority or credibility of the persuader, be it a notable or experienced figure in the field or even a popular celebrity. Okay, so uh, you appeal to your audience and, and try to convince based on who your, you are. Okay, um, so uh, you are the expert in that area, for example, then you will be appealing to this, yeah? Um, uh, appeal to ethics because you are the right person to be talking about it. You know your stuff very well. Okay? So you are um, taking advantage of the cred credibility of the person who is submitting the proposal. Yeah? So if I want to submit a proposal uh, to you, then uh, and I am submitting a proposal on uh, what is a good computer. Maybe you will not be very convinced yeah, because I am an English lecturer. How can I know so much about computer? But if I give you a proposal on how to come up with a good proposal, then perhaps then you will be more convinced of because maybe I am the right person to do it yeah, because I should know what I am talking about. So um, we have to try to, to play on that, yeah, to show that we are the right person because we are the expert. And we, we, in our proposal, we have, uh, when there is an opportunity to do that, that is what we have to try to include in our proposal. Yeah. So, uh, for example, in our proposal, you want uh, to show that you have a credible team. Okay. Uh, who have done this so many times and you are very sure that they will be able to carry it out uh, without any problems. Uh, so that is how this can be applicable yeah, to, to writing your proposal. You are trying to persuade the audience that you are the right man to do the job. Uh, okay. Or if it's not you, you have the credible team that carry out for you effectively, successfully. Yeah? So there is ethos, appeal to ethics. Yeah? And then the, the next um, uh, appeal that you can employ is pathos, appeal to emotion. Uh, here, this is uh, related to what we have discussed earlier about how um, uh, our children are using, you know, sometimes black male you know by crying <laughs> or they say you know if you buy um if you give me a new handphone mama you know i will promise that i will study harder i will make sure that i get a in all my subject okay so that is the 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 promise that they they, they will give you you know to make sure that they get the new handphone so actually this is what they your children is doing to you it they are using the appeal to emotion yeah and uh the greek word for it is pathos yeah they, they call it pathos so appeal to emotion is a way of convincing an audience of an argument by creating an emotional response to an impassioned plea or a convincing story uh -huh. And the last one, 
the last strategy is logos appeal to logic so here logic yeah uh, this is when we want the hard facts uh, to support the argument is a way of persuading an audience with reasons using facts and figures uh, so um in writing the proposal uh are we should we be employing all these appeals or we should all only go with logos Optology only coming up with facts and figures, or we can employ all these three rhetorical appeals, yeah, and to make uh, to make sure that our proposal is going to be convincing enough. What do you think? Anybody would like to respond to that question? I think for official uh, proposal should be logos. Okay, uh, you can answer me later. Okay, but these are just examples. Yeah? We talked about ethos earlier. Um, so to, to demonstrate that you are the credible people to do it, you are the, the right person to do it. Yeah. Um, so these are some other examples Yeah, can be shown in your speech. Okay, this is how ethos is being um, used. Yeah, if you can see in the example, as a doctor, uh, I am qualified to tell you that this course of treatment will likely generate the best results. Okay, so you say you are a doctor, so you are the right person. Uh, you know to to be able, you are qualified. Uh, and then something like in the second example, my three decades of experience in public service my tireless commitment to the people of this community and my willingness to reach across the aisle and cooperate cooperate with the opposition make me the ideal candidate for your meal okay this someone is you know um, standing to become a mayor huh? so they say that i have three decades of experience in public service so, so you are actually uh, employing this strategy to show that you are the most suitable candidate yeah, because you have this experience with you that you carry with you. Huh? And then uh, number three, in my, if my years as a Marine taught me anything is that caution is the best policy in this sort of situation. So here, the fact that you are a Marine, okay, uh, so you are uh, the right person you understand the situation better than other people huh? and uh, our expertise in roofing contracting is evidenced not only by our 50 years in business and our staff or qualified technician but in the decades of satisfied customers who have come to expect nothing but the best yeah so here are all these examples of how people are uh, using their credibility uh, their expertise, okay, uh, their qualification to show, to convince people that you know your stuff well, okay, so you should listen to what I am saying, or you should believe in me, okay, so he is a forensics and ballistic expert for the federal government, if anyone's qualified to determine the murder weapon, it is him, Okay, so we can also be using all these kind of examples, yeah, uh, something similar like this, to show that uh, we are the expert, we are the right people to conduct the project, because we understand our stuff very well. If you don't uh, give it to us, 
who else can you give it to? Okay, so if you are not giving it to us, of course, uh, you will be the, the uh, you will be the losing end. Okay, you will be the one that is going to lose out because uh, I am the right, I am the best qualified person to carry the job. I have this best team because of this, but it's not just claim yeah that you are the best. You have to be the best. You have to have the 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 uh the the proof uh, you have to be what you have claimed so so in your proposal you should also include elements like this yeah um, in your document so that people will be convinced that you are the most qualified person or you have the most uh, credible team to conduct the project to carry out the project yeah to make it successful, to make uh, the project a reality. Yeah? So that is the example of ethos. Um, example of logos. Okay? Logos just now, um, uh, when you are using hard facts. Yeah? So uh, facts and statistics or making historical and literal analogy. So just now you said you were not convinced because uh, about the sleep, yeah, because there was no statistics or uh, <coughs> who the doctor, who is the scientist that is telling that, who is saying that, yeah. So uh, this is what you need. Uh, okay, when you have, let's say you say the scientist, be specific about the scientist, or when you say doctors or uh, references that. Uh, state that facts okay which one so you want it to be properly cited uh, that is an example of facts and figures that you can also provide and is also uh, expected to be included in your proposal yeah so you can see the data is perfectly clear this investment has consistently turned a profit year over year even in spite of market declines in other areas so you show maybe you want to show um the profit, yeah. Uh, so you look at the, uh, the 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 bar graph, whatever, to show how your profit or uh, line graph, you know, has increased over the years. So all this hard evidence to be used, to be at your disposal when you want to try to convince people, yeah. Okay, here you do not only have the fingerprints, yeah, the lack. Uh, we have not only the fingerprints, the lack of an alibi, a clear motive and an express desire to commit the robbery. We also have video of the suspect breaking in. The case could not be more open and shut. So this one, you have all the evidence to prove that uh, this person has broken in. Yeah? Whatever, uh, your room, your house, whatever. Yeah? It's a matter of common sense that people deserve to be treated equally. The constitution calls it self-evidence. Why then should I have been denied a seat because of my disability? So you are citing the constitution who, which has stated yeah, that you should be treated equally. More than 100 peer-reviewed studies have been conducted over the past decades and none of them suggest that this is an effective treatment for hair loss. Hmm. Um, so let's say um, if you are going to come up with a proposal to convince your department to give you more budget to repair the equipment, for example, just now, yeah? what kind of facts and figures that you can use to convince your uh, decision maker to increase the budget? that you spend uh, to use the equipment outside mm. it's not very clear what you're saying sister sorry the cost that we spend uh, when we want to use the equipment outside ah okay yeah you can say this is you cannot uh, let it to continue because this is how much that we have spent because we have to outsource or we have to get the service from outside ah. Uh, this is how much that you have spent and then you compare yeah? if you uh, buy a new uh, equipment uh, this is how much that we can save mm. there's a very good uh, uh, support yeah to to convince your boss that 
they need to increase because the amount of saving that you can get yeah by getting a better uh, equipment uh, so uh, so this is also the kind of things that we want to include in our proposal yeah to convince people hard facts and figures statistics uh, which they cannot say no because these are hard data okay they have to agree they have to accept it it's not just claims uh. and the last one pathos yeah uh, in language that draws out feelings such as pity or anger in an audience uh. if we don't move soon we are all going to die can't you see how dangerous it will be to stay uh, okay so feeling here so this is danger yeah so we know impending danger uh, you better be uh, you better live uh. so you are giving a warning um so usually this is a sure a sure way to get people to do the action yeah to follow what you are suggesting i'm not just invested in this community i love every building every business every hardworking member of this town okay so i love so you are you are uh, stirring the heart string of your audience yeah you because you love uh, there's no price that can be placed on peace of mind our advanced security system will protect that the well-being of your family so that you can sleep soundly at night mm. So there is no price that can be placed on a peace of mind. Uh, so you know, uh, just feel the reaction that it it, it gives, yeah? that it creates when you hear this kind of uh, statements. Where would you be without this tradition? Ever since our forefathers landed at Plymouth Rock, we have celebrated Thanksgiving. Okay, to this one, uh, I made I took it from somewhere. They have worked against everything we have worked so hard to build and they don't care who gets hurt in this process. Make no mistake, they are the enemy and they won't stop until we are all destroyed. Okay, so um, you can see here examples that people have used in their writing, okay? Uh, all to convince people, all for the purpose of being convincing. Yeah. So these are also some of the strategies that we should also be employing when we are writing our proposal yeah just now my question uh, was whether we should only use one of the strategies or we can also we can also use all the strat three strategies so what is the likely answer for that based on where i am getting at you know where what have been happening so far what do you think is the answer? Mm, I think uh, most proposals are using facts and very likely to find one that use uh, petals. Uh, I think so I've, been, uh, I've been seeing the proposal so far ah, okay um, yeah maybe uh, the extent of how much we are going to use it may not be the same okay as you have rightly pointed out perhaps there should be more of facts you know uh, but occasionally we may be using all the other strategies as well yeah? so um, you are right also yeah but uh, i i think it, most of the time whether you want it or not we will be um, using all these strategies okay if you look at any proposal i can guarantee you that all the strategies are being employed Okay, if it is a successful proposal, uh, definitely you can see the evidence of all these strategies are being uh, used in the document, are being employed in the documents. Yeah, maybe the, the, the amount may not be the same, but here and there you can see yeah, that uh, this, all this ethos, pathos, and logos being employed in, in, in that writing. Uh, but 
the 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 thing for sure is that we cannot be using just one yeah uh, so you can use all of them but definitely facts and figures have to be there yeah it cannot uh, happen without you providing the facts and figures but uh, all throughout the documents i'm sure there will be um, examples or statements that will be employing all the other two as well in the documents to make it a good proposal yeah so because uh how to be effective we have to be touching their emotion as well we have to be telling them that we are the right people to do it yeah and we also have to provide them with facts and figures so um Clearly, we can see that all this will be needed when we are writing our, our proposal. Okay, when these are being used well, cohesively together, then you will get a successful proposal at your disposal. Yeah. Okay, doctor. Yes. Uh, I'm already tired of talking here, actually. Are you tired of listening to me already? It's only half uh, past 11, right? 11.25. What are we going to do next? Okay. Let's have... Okay, uh, what is it? Okay, just have a good um, rest. Okay, but you don't need to go if you don't need to go. Okay, but just have a, a short break. Okay, uh, let's see whether we can um, get our brain to have a little break by <laughs> answering this question. <sighs> Actually, I'm a bit tired. Let me have a few minutes of rest first. Maybe while while uh, giving us to catch a few breaths, um, we can also look at this brain teasers. I've already uh, come up with something to tease your brain. Do we need to answer, Doctor? Okay, tak bo uh, boleh. Kalau anybody wants to answer, okay, let's let's look at the first one. What gets wet while drying? A towel. Yay! <laughs> I think that one, uh, almost everybody will know the answer. Good, okay. Number two, what can you hold in your right hand but never in your left hand? Well, quite challenging. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can skip question number two. We can go to question number three. What can you catch but not throw? Anybody? <laughs> elbow i think that is for the second answer yeah second question is not elbow <laughs> number three anybody what can you catch but not throw flu flu um what is another name for flu cool Ah, yes, very good. So, because we don't say you, you throw flu, yeah? Uh, <laughs> you, catch a, we, you catch a cold, yes. You don't really say you catch a flu. Uh, you catch a cold, yes. But they are actually the same. 
So you are right in saying it's a flu. Is the answer is flu? Number four. What kind of a what kind of band never plays music? Rubber band. Yay! Spot on, rubber band. <laughs> and the last one. What has many teeth but cannot bite? Any takers? Crystal? Again? Heckle. Huh? The heckle. Heckle, yes. Yay, comb, yeah? <laughs> comb. <laughs> it has many teeth but cannot bite. Okay. Uh. I have run out of questions <laughs> for you. Okay. Um, from now until uh, we go for our break, yeah. Um, I would like you. I I do not know whether it is possible for you to be working in groups or in pairs is it possible you do you know each other's phone number <laughs> we don't know each other <laughs> oh you do not know each other yeah yeah okay. uh, i think later on i will create a uh, I will create something for you so that we can have a proper channel to read because I think I overestimate overestimate or uh, underestimate you know because it's only 11 30 but what I have um, in line um, plan is actually meant for the afternoon session because all this while you have been listening to me right so uh, that is the challenge of um, online classes. How can you survive for many, many hours if only you are the only one who is doing the talking or, or most of the time? Yeah? Uh, it's, a, it's a challenge. If for my class, my own uh, students, I will not be having this very long session, you know, online. It's very tiring and very demanding on the, on the students as well. Yeah, because uh, I don't know. I think because I am old, that is the reason why I get tired so easily. <laughs> Perhaps you can survive better. But I think uh, many hours of listening is also not very um, right for many, many people. Yeah? Um, If I ask you, I actually have this plan also, okay? Because I stressed just now how um, important it is for us to be able to describe the problem very well, yeah? Um, I would like you to come up with um, the problem statement part. Okay, let's imagine that you have a problem at your workplace, at your respective office, and you want to tell your boss of the problem. So you have to say what the problem is, okay, describe it very well, and try to uh, employ all the strategies that we have discussed earlier in your illustration of the problem. And then you try to um, say how bad the problem is and if you don't do anything about it then the problem will become worse or you know uh, the situation will get so bad uh, so um, can we try to do that you just write it 
on a piece of paper. Okay, maybe just a short paragraph. Are you willing to do that? <laughs> well, you have to do that because I'm the boss now. <laughs> you have to listen to your teacher and your teacher asks you to do that. Because here, we are looking at the language. Yeah? So uh, the theory is easy, but the, when it comes to really putting it down in writing, that is the more challenging part. So it will be good if we can try to, 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 to try out the strategy here, trying to use statistics, trying to use um, emotions and trying to um, also use, um, what is that one? Uh, to show that credibility on your part, you know, to, to, to uh, but I think the credi credibility part may not be applicable when you are describing the, the problem. Or perhaps um, while you are doing it on your own, okay, I will set up, I will try to set up. Um, okay, now I'm going to stop sharing, okay, I'll, because I'm going to set up a Padlet page. And then maybe, uh, can you please work on the task that I have asked you to do? And let's see, perhaps um, 15 minutes? We'll get back together, okay? So you just uh, think of a problem that you uh, identify a problem. It doesn't have to be very big. So just simple, simple problems that you think can be rectified easily. Maybe you say that uh, you don't have enough um, uh, supply in your pantry, for example. So how are you going to make sure that, you know, people contribute to uh, providing the supply so that everybody can enjoy? Nescafe uh, or the biscuits, you know, during their break uh, at the pantry, for example, or you don't have a place to to rest properly during your lunch break. Uh, okay, so what are you going to suggest? Uh, so, but the suggestion comes later. But just I would like you to try to come to describe the problem. Yeah, try to describe it as convincing as possible as convincing as possible you know so that people can really feel the problem with you yeah so um i'm going to uh, give you 15 minutes to work on that okay in the meantime i will uh, stop sharing because i want to set up a padlet inshallah okay okay hakim Brother Hakim. <laughs> Are you still here? Is it my connection? Uh, can you yeah. still hear me? Yeah, your connection is okay. Ah, okay. So, All right. uh, yeah, so that is the task that I would like you to do. Are you clear of what you need to do now? yes yes doctor okay thank you so much yeah so i'm going to leave you to do the task for 50 minutes and then um we'll we'll do something else so i will stop sharing Uh, sorry, Doctor. Yeah. So we'll come back uh 11.50? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, 11.50. Uh, uh. Yeah. Thank you. I think because I want to set up Padlet, do I have to leave first? Uh, it's up to you. I think I have to leave first. Because if not, then I cannot. 
Okay, yeah? so I'll come back okay. insyaAllah. All right.
Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Okay, we are back, yeah. Uh, can you see on your screen, I have a padlet open? Yeah, proposal writing. Uh -uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, can you please go to that page? Okay, you can see. Can you um, see the address? I think maybe you can uh, copy the link and share to the chat. Uh, chat tu ya. Yeah. Uh, macam mana nak go to the chat ya? Eh? Hmm, copy. Hmm. Uh, back to Zoom. Okay, I have already put it there. I've already um, copied it on the chat box. Can you see it? Back to Zoom macam mana ya? Can you see it on the chat box? Oh yeah. Not yet? Oh yeah, betul. Tak ada lagi. Ah, macam mana ya? Sekejap. So, uh, I go back. Maybe doctor can uh, stop the sharing, screen sharing, ah, then okay. copy the zoom. Okay, okay. Stop sharing. Yes. Sekejap ya, copy. Sorry. Stop sharing and uh, chat where is the chat now uh, sebelah kiri daripada screen sharing sebelah kiri <laughs> screen oh. sharing okay. i can see participant yeah where is the chat box has gone missing invite Sebelah kiri from screen sharing. Just now I can see. Sorry, I am so not good with this. Now I cannot see. Chat. Oh, okay. So I have already copied it there. So just. Okay. Okay, got it. Yeah. I will share it to YouTube also. Oh, all right. Okay, um, if you can get to the link that I provided to you, then you will be able to um, write on this Padlet page that I have set up. Yeah, can somebody who is already in to scribble anything, you know, to see whether it is working or not? Yes, say salam ke apa ke, just write on that. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Okay, good.
Okay, so um, I hope you will be able to see. Yeah, my intention of creating this page is that we can share with everyone. So just now, I have already asked you to describe the problem. Yeah, uh, you have already identified a problem and try to describe it in writing. So this is what I would like you to do. You can write on this and you know um and see what you have come up with you know so so don't be afraid this is the time to see that um you know you are trying out and see whether uh, you are on the right track whatever this is just you know for us to learn from each other yeah so i would really appreciate it if anyone of you here would like to try to write the problem that you have identified here rather just now i asked you to prepare it on a piece of uh, paper so but now i have created this page for you to write on this page so that you can share it with uh, the rest of uh, our friends today You don't have to tell who you are. Okay, just write the problem. We do not know, we do not need to know who you are if you don't want to. Okay, anybody? Please write the problem here. It's already known, yeah. So, uh, is anybody would like to try? <laughs> write the pro well, just write anything that you have come up with. No takers yet. You already said salam there, assalamualaikum, then just please continue. <laughs> No, why are we quiet? This is a challenge yeah? when you're doing online. If it's face to face, I'll go and come next to you and give you a pen. If you um, are not going to share anything, then it's quite difficult for me to, to comment or to give my feedback. <laughs> yeah, so all this while you have been listening to me. So now I wish that you can come up with something so that, you know, we can try uh, to, to see. We have another half an hour. <laughs> I, I, I hope that you're working on it on your own. Okay, maybe later when it is ready, then you don't mind sharing it on this page.
Alhamdulillah, there's one who has appeared. Any more? Hmm, it's not very encouraging, yeah? <laughs> it's coming slowly or it's not coming at all? How can I get you to, to, to write on this? Please help me. I'm, I don't want to be <laughs> waiting, it's, you know. So I want to see what is going to happen. Are you not going to write anything at all or it is coming? Or you... you or you have other plans in mind. Okay, we have case two. Alhamdulillah. Okay, we got three. Thank you so much. We still have space <laughs> for others to write also. Okay, so we have another one. Alhamdulillah. Okay, here. Uh. 
Okay, Alhamdulillah, another one.
Okay, do we have anybody else who's going to uh, contribute? Very real problems that you have identified here. Yeah, <laughs> we have a Okay, I think uh, you can continue writing. Yeah, if you, uh, I wish you would continue writing those who have not. But um, thank you for those who have contributed here. We can see we already have a quite a number of problems been identified. Yeah, perhaps you can start with um, here the case number one problem short of manpower to accommodate workload in the office so and the staff you said earlier i think yeah um, then we have uh, broken equipment broken chairs uh, very real problem and then we have uh, lack of skills of keeping handling soft copies file uh. Okay. And then electricity, saving electricity, what we can do when students and um, many staff are not around. And then also another broken equipment problem. Uh, we have many. We have three cases of um, broken equipment. Yeah? Here, um, no, no budget. Here, we are concerned about the ergonomic. And the broken equipment here, it be one of the bigger problems for quite a long day, equipment problems such as, okay. Okay, okay, so you have successfully identified the problems, yeah? So in terms of the content of the proposal, inshallah, we will not have any problem, yeah? Because obviously we are faced with many problems around us. Yeah? We come across so many problems with regards to what we do at our workplace. Um, so Alhamdulillah, you have achieved that objective. But my brief earlier, my instruction was for you to try to write it down um okay here basically they are mostly in point form yeah points um so we don't really feel it it is uh my intention of asking you to write this as is actually to to try to because all these are very factual yeah so we can see that you have only employed this strategy of um the appeal on facts and evidence yeah but when you are described but we, we don't feel it that much yeah so i would like you actually the the brief for you the instruction is for you to try to describe it put using a lot more uh, expressions uh, which employ the strategy to stir the emotion to to the feelings and to create the uh, the authority to tak adalah but this one is so very informative yeah so it's not very persuasive i feel so this is yes this is the problem that you face but i do not want you actually to come up with a solution yeah not yet i just want you to create to describe the problem and trying to make it 
very effectively illustrated that we can really be convinced convinced that it's a real problem for, for example if you say yeah, problem the first one here lack of skills of keeping handling soft copies file okay um so uh, provide a bit more uh details yeah and and when we talk about the effect um here in ability to keep soft copies properly and need to bring perhaps you can also give evidence uh, these are all general effect but give more details so that people can can really understand it better if you say inability to keep soft copy properly uh so so what happened when you don't have we, we don't really see yeah inability to keep soft copy properly and need to bring all the hard copies file to home during the pandemic uh, so if you say bring need to bring all the hard copies perhaps rather than bring we can use like to lock you know to 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 fill up or a box uh, countless boxes you know to fill with uh, hard copies of this and having to uh, bring in at home which occupy more space unnecessary space at home and things like that so here uh, rather than just putting it in point form or in numbers here uh, I would like you to try to describe it in paragraph this problem. Yeah? Try to put all the strategies that you can think of to really illustrate the seriousness of the issue. Here I would like to see the, the language being manipulated, the tone of it yeah, being purposely created to be more convincing. So basically what I'm trying to say is to put a lot more heart into your writing rather than just presenting it in this way uh, as hard facts, which is true. But when we are um, writing a document that is supposed to be convincing, okay, uh, we, we, we need to try to, to really be more um, strategic in terms of, you know, trying to be more... Uh, selective at the kind of words that we use uh, stronger words strong emo emotionally laden words yeah you, you see that here you can add here and there when you are describing the problem you can repair this this is already very good start yeah but uh, the the real thing uh, the actual thing that i really would like to see from you is not um, so much of highlighting the problem, but the way you describe the problem, because we, we are looking at the language here, yeah? Uh, the content in identifying the problem is already good enough. You already know what it is. But when we express the problem, we want you to put a lot more heart into describing it so that people can really relate it, relate to the problem when they read it. Yeah. So the person who is going to make the decision can really feel the struggle that you are going through. Ah, that is the intention. So I would like you to try to try to achieve that effect. Hmm. In in illustrating the problems. That is actually what I would like you to try to do to actually by, by by doing this yeah so you can still work on the same uh, problem but instead of um focusing on the solution i want you to focus on describing the problem better uh, and try to write it in continuous writing rather than in this uh, because this is going to be in the introduction part of your proposal yeah the solution will come later so just here in this task i would like you to just focus in the introduction part of the proposal where you are going to just state the problem and the effect of the problem yeah so basically all about the problem but try to explain it in detail try to be more convincing by employing all the strategies that we have looked at earlier or you can also use other means you know to make it uh, properly illustrated so that people can really feel what you are going through, uh, what you are describing, so they can relate to the problem very well. Uh, so that is uh, what I would like you to do. Yeah. Okay, so boleh tak?
you just uh, try to um, to add to whatever that you already have. Boleh no? Okay, Alhamdulillah. Uh, I think uh, I'm going to, uh, should we, um, do you want to continue or you want to go for a break first? I don't know. Until what time are we supposed to be having this session? What is, when is our lunch break? I didn't check. I didn't ask. Is it one or twelve thirty? Hakim. <laughs> I didn't ask if lie. <laughs> Ah, yeah, you're some alhamdulillah, you're working on it. Hmm. Alhamdulillah, I can see here, yeah. Case number two here, you can see that you are trying all those uh, strategies. Uh, you can feel the struggle here when you are describing about the problem uh, caused by non-ergonomic sitting uh, chairs. Thank you, Hazik. You are the first one to accomplish the goal that I have set out for you. Uh, Alhamdulillah. I'm sure the rest of you can also do the same. Yeah. Hazik, uh, if, we, if we meet face to face, then I can treat you to lunch <laughs> for being my, my, my very cooperative student today. Right, 
I guess people are still writing, right? Yeah. Do, uh, because that thing is still moving, so it indicates that people are still working on it. Mm. Okay, we have another one here, yeah? Hmm, okay. Now you, you are getting it. I think perhaps um, you can continue working on your writing, okay? But before we go off for our lunch break, perhaps we can have a look at what we already have here, yeah? So uh, I hope uh, you don't mind, you know, me um, commenting on what you have written here because we are here, you know, to try to um, improve ourselves, right? So I hope, uh, you know... Um, my comments will not hurt you in any way because we are looking at the language aspect. Yeah. So Alhamdulillah, um, I, I hope, you know, other people will also be coming up with uh, paragraphs rather than just points like this. Yeah. So let's have a look at what Hazik has done here. Yeah. So you can see, um, what is the problem from this one? Can we feel the struggle, the, the, the problem that they are facing yeah? um, by reading what he has written here? Ergonomic seating position is important. Since all of office workers spend more than half of their day at office, sit on chair to do work, our sitting position affect the quality and productivity of employee, especially our health. Uh, wrong and non-ergonomic sitting position could lead to lower back pain and even worse, affect the quality of life. Imagine our female workers that are pregnant facing this problem. It would increase their level of stress and affecting their infant. Okay, so, yes, some of the broken chairs in office should be changed with new ones that has been used for quite some time. Fast action need to be taken so that we could prevent future hazard and injuries to the employee. Okay, comments from others? Can, can, can you feel the, the problem that is being described here? Can you relate to what is being described? Yes. 
Yeah, it's very true, okay? And we mm -hmm. can relate to it easily because, you know, uh, you are saying how it's going to, uh, we, 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 in in our mind, we can imagine this situation, yeah, at the office with this very uncomfortable seat that we have to sit on daily for hours. Uh. Uh, and then uh, the, the hazards that it could lead to, the health effects that it will bring, not just it is affecting your comfort level, but it's also giving you a lot of health problems. Yeah, uh, It will lead to back problems. And I think the best thing of all is the fact that you have cited the example of pregnant ladies having to see this. The impact is going to be worse for them. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this is a very, I, I believe uh, you have done a very good job of describing, illustrating the problem here, yeah, through the language that you use, through the way you describe the problem. Uh, so you have actually employed all the strategies you have already, facts, maybe facts is there but it's not supported, yeah. Uh, you can say hours, maybe you can say um, statistics have shown that at the office you spend uh, at least six hours sitting or whatever and then it can lead to that point being raised yeah uh, but uh, what you have done very well here is relating it to the uh, the, the emotion yeah the feelings uh, the sex the senses uh, the discomfort all this talking about the the, the senses that we can feel uh. Uh, so when when we start putting this forward, okay, put forth in our argument, then definitely people can relate to it very well, yeah, so they can feel it, uh, even though they're just reading it, but they can really understand the situation, yeah, clearly, because they can relate to it easily, and uh, because of this, do you feel that you are urged to solve the problem? Yes, absolutely. Yes, right? Uh, something must be done to stop this because you see how serious the problem is. Uh, so that is the effect that we want to create from our writing okay, in the introduction part. Uh, this is um, half of the, the part in the introduction. You are explaining the problem. Yeah? Okay, so that is a... a Job well done, Hazik. Yeah. So who else? Ha, this one panjang juga ni. Ha? Okay. Let's see the next one about not having enough skills in handling e files and e documents. I am one of these people. Yeah. I don't have enough skills. Let's see. During the COVID nineteen pandemic, we face the difficulties in performing our tasks well as an administrative staff when working at home due to challenges faced, especially those related to documents. Even though staff are allowed to bring home all relevant and required documents, there are still numbers of problems that occurred in handling and managing the documents. It is not only challenges in having to bring boxes of files home, but also the challenges of keeping them safe and providing specific space for those documents. There are also challenges of sharing any required documents with others by which the staff need scanner, scanning application or mobile phone to scan the documents before sharing it to others, which consume more time. Consumption of extra time while doing work and having to take care of the family at home at the same time will cause stress to the staff. Ah, definitely. <laughs> ah, okay. So also very good here. So you 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 can see that you know how unnecessary it is, yeah. That you 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 having to face this uh, because uh, you don't have these skills, yeah, enough skills to um, overcome the problem to manage these hand e files and e documents better. Uh, so all this um, trouble you know unnecessary problems that you have to face and just simply because you don't know so what is your solution here oh okay proper training training so here what you have successfully illustrated is uh, the hassle you know the unnecessary hassle that you have to face daily uh, because we don't have enough skills to manage all these files, uh, um, not just 
for for you yourself but also it is affecting your family it's also affecting your your fellow co-workers and all those things yeah? and then all the extra problem that you are required to to purchase extra equipment you know in order to uh, <coughs> uh, nama? Uh, to be able to share all these documents uh, so we can feel it um the, the struggle is real okay the problem is real and because you have managed to illustrate the problem very well here and therefore you know automatically your whoever that is going to read this will, will feel will will do nothing but to try to help the situation uh, so that is the effect that we want yeah, to create from our writing on if you can do this whenever you write a proposal later then inshallah you know your boss will say yes without any question uh, that is what we are trying to achieve yeah alhamdulillah um okay we have a, the other one here this one is about the understaff, I think, yeah. Currently, we only have two staff per unit, which are one officer and one admin assistant to handle the workload for this unit. However, due to high workload and demand from our client, we are unable to focus on the other work. Um, that are possibly have the same importance as the others, work which are documentation and date update. As such, we feel exhausted. Uh, exhausted and a bit frustrated when we're trying to find the document and information needed at crucial time we feel that we are in short of manpower to accommodate workload uh, in the office yeah so you see that you this frustration and exhaustion that you are going through daily uh, while at work uh, which is not necessary uh, because all these are caused by the shortage of uh, manpower which having to um, manage many many tasks yeah on just the two of you having to manage all these very important tasks and therefore you have to put aside some of the uh, equally important tasks that you have to perform yeah okay so um so very good so this is what i am trying to get across earlier okay when when you come up with the problem when you illustrate the problem you have to be able to really express it in the way that people can feel the problem that you are describing yeah so how are you going to make sure that they can feel it okay usually when it comes to this problem we have to really um manipulate the feeling so all these strong emotionally laden words like exhaustion you said here yeah frustrated uh, uh pregnant ladies having to you know to bear the weight of the child while sitting how un you know uh, uncomfortable it would be for them and all we can feel all the back pain that you are describing these are all um words that are related to your senses yeah uh, so um you have been very uh very on point yeah by using all this word when you are describing the problem so we, I, I think automatically by default, these are the kind of words that we need to try to put in here and there yeah? to really get the problem across to our audience when we are writing our proposal. It doesn't, uh, uh, in this case, it's proposal. Yeah? But when we want to describe a problem very well, I think uh, this is what uh, we need to be able to do. Okay, um, ada lagi ya, eh? electric saving pun ada. Okay, uh, I think we can go off for our lunch break first, yeah? And then we'll get back to this. Um, we'll look at the rest that we already have here and we'll also look at the grammar a little bit, if you don't mind, yeah? So we'll look at, at the expressions, at the content, and the length. 
wish that you have used but there are here here and there that we can see some grammatical mistakes and perhaps we should also highlight here later okay so um so thank you very much for your uh, attention and contribution and up to our lunch break um so we can go off and have lunch and pray and then inshallah we'll come back at at what time should we come back uh it's up to you Dada. it's up to me yeah uh if two or so can 250 uh 250 quarter past two uh yeah oh, past okay two. so 50. if everybody agrees to that then we can three, agree two, to meet. Three, two fifteen yeah lah, quarter past two <laughs> okay, 2.15, yeah? So we okay. will resume at 2.15. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, welcome. Yes, so thank you everyone. So yeah. we'll come back at 2.15. Yeah. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, thank you.
Assalamualaikum. We only have 10 participants here yeah, right now. Hi, Assalamualaikum. All right. So you can proceed, another. I can. We don't want to wait for some more to join. Or oh, they have gone and will not come back. <laughs> Inshallah, they will be joining. Yeah. Yeah, maybe they will joining. What is in the chat? Let me just check.
Okay. We shall continue. Okay, Jen. Okay. Okay. Um, Alhamdulillah, we are back in the um, afternoon session. I hope that, you know, I'm not losing that many customers in the afternoon session. I'm left with 11 only now. Uh, just now it was 17, yeah? So <laughs> uh, thank you for continuing with me uh, and uh, persevere to bear with me for the next two hours, inshallah. Um, I do not know whether those who have written on my Padlet page that I did just now are uh, here, are back. I hope you are back. Okay, you are still in this session. Um, because I will be going back to what you have written earlier, yeah? But perhaps um, in case there will be more joining in soon, later, uh, I will not go back straight to what we have done on the Padlet, okay? I'm going to share with you uh, something quite different, looking at the language, yeah? And um, because, because you are already very, um, actually, I think most of you are already at least at the intermediate level, yeah? Or at least you must have obtained higher than band six or band six, the least you know, for, to be able uh, to be here. And uh, in EPT, for example, if we ask you to sit for the EPT, I'm sure you would have been able to obtain band six very easily. Yeah? So we expect that your proficiency should be um, at least at the intermediate level. Yeah? And because you have already reached a certain level of competency, okay, the kind of errors that you are making may be a bit more complicated yeah it is complicated in the sense that um it's difficult to to correct yeah uh, because it's the 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 mistakes that you make are not obvious mistakes but when we read it we know there's something not quite right somewhere but it's difficult to pinpoint because it's not like missing the S when you want to denote plural or the subject verb agreement do not agree. Yeah. So that one is easy if you look at the grammatical mistakes. But people usually at this level, they will be making mistakes because um, we are not native speakers. Yeah. Our experience and our belief and our culture is different. And and if we don't read if we don't live with the native speakers, if we don't, uh, you know, really uh, have the experience of living with them and really um, mingle with them and listen to what they are saying, maybe it's very difficult for us to really capture what we have done wrong, okay? Because however fluent you are, okay, and if you are not the native speaker, usually people can still detect the mistake that you do, but you thought that there is no mistake, but actually to the native speakers, when they listen to you, they find that something is not quite right. Okay, and sometimes you yourself can feel, oh, this doesn't sound correct, yeah? But you cannot tell why, why is it not correct. It just don't sound right. I, I do not know whether you have experienced this, yeah? Um, when you read something, when you write something, eh, but it doesn't sound right to me huh? so what can be the cause of that yeah so this is what we are going to look at now inshallah um i will share the screen mm, what is it then?
Okay, you can see the slides here that I have on the screen. Okay. okay. I'm not going to play the game yet. Okay, this is what I meant when I described to you earlier, yeah? This one. Ole. Okay. Okay. Have you heard of this word, collocation? Anyone? Okay. If you look at the first group of sentences, okay, it's all about the doctor. Okay, there are five sentences there. Which one that sound okay to you and which one that don't, don't sound very okay? The doctor had a discussion. The doctor had a discussion. Uh, is it, does it sound okay or it's not okay? Uh, not okay. Not okay? <laughs> okay, if not it's okay. not okay to you. Is that the only one that do not seem to, to be okay? Or there are other sentences there in that group? Anybody would like to try? You read all these sentences, yeah? They may appear to be very similar, but can you feel that some of the sentences are a bit off? Maybe, um, Samaiko, uh, may I try? Yes, please. Maybe the doctor, um, sorry. The doctor perform a discussion. It not sounds okay, and um, maybe investigated the patient. I'm not sure. I'm not a doctor, but yeah, it doesn't sound okay to me. Ah, okay, okay. Thank you. Um, all right. Thank you, Adawiya. Anybody else? Uh. And then we are, or what you 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 feel that it doesn't sound okay to you, but do you know the reason? Um, uh, like investigate. Um, uh, the, uh, for me, investigation is like if you take a sample and then go to the lab, and that's not the uh, taking sample. Maybe the doctor's uh, job, but investigation like. You know, going to the lab and see what's the normal value or not. This mm. is is the lab laboratories. Um, I mean, you know, people's uh role, and mm. then perform a discussion. Like if 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 if, if had a discussion, then that's fine. It, it looks okay. But mm. perform, I I think if perform is like you're doing something. <laughs> mm. I don't know. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, yes. You you can feel it, but it's difficult to explain, right? You, you yeah. know, it, it, it's, it's a bit off. And, yeah, and I'm, uh, my English is not good. I mean, yeah. No, no, no. I that, try to that is actually the opposite. <laughs> that is actually the opposite. Your English is so good that you can feel it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, because some people, because you, you see, it's very small difference. Yeah. But if you know the language well, you can differentiate the difference. Uh, it's like examine and investigated. Are they not the same? I mean, if you look at it on the surface, it may be very similar. Yeah. And yet, we cannot be use, replacing examine um, uh, the patient with investigated the patient. Yeah. So we can use examine the patient, but you cannot say the doctor investigated the patient. Uh, so this is what I was telling you about, yeah. When you have 
reach a certain level of your competency in English, you can feel that something is off a little bit. Because when you talk to the Mat Saleh, for the, to the native speaker and say, the doctor investigated the patient. Then the, immediately the Mat Saleh will say, oh, this must be uh, 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 non-native. Um, of course, they will see it in, in, in you, yeah, who you are. But immediately they can tell that you do not sound neutral uh, okay so th that is the problem with most of us even for me yeah because i'm not a native speaker and so i do commit mistakes like this because to us maybe the concept is the same yeah but for the native to the native speakers we, they are not the same the words are specifically um used to be paired with a certain word a certain word it cannot be used with all words, uh, even though um, the meaning may be similar. Yeah? So that is the collocation. Uh, in English, when we talk about collocation, there are words that always go together, and these are the, the neutral one, the correct one, which are being used by the native speakers. Yeah? If we are the non-native speaker, we may not realize it because we think that had a discussion and perform a discussion are the same but to the mat saleh we say the doctor perform a discussion that is not correct yeah because the language doesn't sound neutral it is not the natural language that they are using yeah but um so it's nothing wrong with the grammar it's just that the words do not collocate well together yeah so to to show uh, to have a mastery of language, then we should realize that certain words can just get along with certain words. We cannot use it interchangeably. They don't work that way. Yeah. So this is what I'm trying to to to, to share with you. Yeah. Be because um, these are common mistakes that we still do. Yeah. And uh, especially if I said after you have acquired a certain level of competency to improve yourself then perhaps you have to start looking at this aspect of the language yeah how the words collocate uh, in, in in if you look if you um uh, google they have oxford dictionary of collocations yeah this is especially good because i am also bringing in in into this session because when you are writing your uh, proposal Okay, you want you want to make sure that you choose your words very well. Eh? The vo vocabulary that you want to use has to be thought well, yeah, because you cannot simply because we want to achieve that 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 effect of being very convincing. So you want to try to use. It's like a, a strong proposal, a good proposal, a bad proposal. Are you going to limit yourself to with just bad and good? Yeah, you can also use other words that can go with proposal. So if you uh, want to get help for this kind of things, perhaps you can also start looking at Oxford Dictionary of Collocation, Collocation uh, Oxford Dictionary of Collocation. Yeah. So if you type, let's say proposal, then they will give you a list of words that can go with proposal. And this, then you can choose from that choices that they're giving you, okay, which one that you want, yeah? So you can see that there are a lot of options that you can use which will be suitable. You just have um, to be chosen carefully, yeah? Which that will suit your need most. Uh, so there is the kind of things that we can um, refer to, yeah? When we are writing. Um, so, um, this is one aspect that you we have to maybe start to be aware of because I don't think many people have talked to you about this, yeah. Because uh, as I said, um, this is for the higher level problem, yeah. In terms of sounding neutral to the native speakers, you you can feel it most of the time, but you cannot really explain it to your. If you were to explain it to your children or to for me to my students sometimes it's difficult it's just how they use it they don't use this word with a discussion you know they only use it uh when uh, perform they don't use head use head for a discussion uh, but why uh, we cannot really explain why but this will come across when you read a lot and you can see how it's being used yeah so 
by osmosis maybe you will be absorbing all this information and then when you come across something that don't normally are uh, not normally used then you can realize oh this doesn't sound right yeah or this doesn't seem to be acceptable but anyway okay so if you look at the first set of example here the doctor examined the patient yes but the doctor investigated the patient cannot yeah who performed an investigation? Who should be uh, paired with investigated here? Police. Ah, yes, the police investigated the case, uh, you know, uh, investigated the crime. Uh, then it will go well together. And then the doctor perform an operation, yes, but the doctor perform a discussion cannot, yeah. As you said, perform requires more to be done, action. Uh, you feel it, uh, so that's why you cannot say the doctor perform a discussion. The doctor had a discussion, yes. Yeah, we had a discussion, but we don't perform a discussion. We have a discussion, yeah. So, so you can see what I'm trying to to say here, right? Uh, not all words can be used well together okay there are words that naturally go well together but there are words that you cannot use together side by side and this will differentiate uh, whether your language is correct or not i mean it's new natural or not yeah to the native speaker like uh, the second set here the second pair high probability and high chance there, there is a high probability that it will rain there is a high chance that it will rain uh, are they both okay when we look at the word probability usually what comes before that apart from high high probability do they go well together to you or which one is it high chance or can we pair chance with something else Ah, for me, sorry. I think it's high chance. Is what? You have high chance of getting something. If you, maybe you have high chance of getting uh, heart disease if you uh, always take a fat food, uh, foods, uh, uh, yeah, fatty foods. Uh, so you, you think high chance is acceptable? Uh, for me, uh, I use that. <laughs> yeah. Ah, you use that. Ah, okay. Okay, anybody else would like to maybe comment? People, yes. Maybe scientific people use high, prob high probability, maybe, you know, uh, maybe statistician, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> um, we are, I think this one is not based on whether you are a statistician or you are a scientist or thing. Yeah, this is uh, any layman is using this. Yeah, uh, perhaps you use it more often, maybe because you are a statistician and you say high probability or high chance. Yeah, but actually, I also perform this mistake. Yeah, I also uh, make this mistake. Um, actually, uh, chance usually don't go high. Don't go with chance. High will go well with probability, but chance you have to say good chance a good chance of it making it through uh, a good chance of um he has a good chance to uh, make it through the journey uh, yeah so it so chance high cannot go well with chance but it can go well with probability chance usually before chance we say good chance uh, so um, that's why sometimes it 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 doesn't look different okay it, it looks okay both of them but for the native speaker they will see oh nah, uh, you use high chance usually we don't use high chance we use good there's a good chance uh, yeah. 
So this will come with exposure to the language, more exposure to the language. Yeah? Then we, we can differentiate the subtle difference between these two words, how they go collocate. Yeah? Uh, so this is the kind um, of issues that we normally, I also uh, am facing right now. Eh? Okay, between do and make. What is the difference? In Malay, I'm not sure whether there is a distinction between do and make. It, buat. Make buat. Uh, do and make. Yeah. So you have to choose which one that you can fill in the blanks. Yeah. Damage, uh, do can go with what word? And make can go well with what word? Okay, try doing it. Can I try, doctor? Okay, please. Uh, uh, damage, do damage, do okay. trouble, make a lot of noise, make an excuse, make one's duty and do wrong. Um, okay, not bad, but it's not perfect yet. <laughs> <laughs> You're almost there. Just one mistake. Okay. Anybody uh, can try? Want to try? Anybody else would like to try? Or can identify which mistake that has been done just now? Here, how many eh, blanks? Uh, you got five over six. Oh, well, not bad. It's still <laughs> an A. Assalamualaikum, Dr. Uh, uh, it's uh, Is it uh, the one we do once, once duty? Ah, salah tadi. Ya salah tadi ya. Eh? Do one's duty ya. Yeah. You said uh, make one's duty. Yes, very good. Yeah. Ah, so that is the one the, the mistake that you did. Yeah. So it is it, it, not make one's duty. Do one's duty. Uh, but the rest uh, was correct. Yeah. So let's say so make or do damage. What is the answer just now? Do or make damage? Do damage. Yes, do a damage. Yeah? Do a lot of damage. Yeah? We cannot say make a lot of damage. The, the, the flood, the rain did a lot of damage to the land. Uh, that one is correct. You cannot say the rain did a lot of damage to the, uh, made a lot of damage to the land, cannot. Yeah. So do damage. Trouble? Make trouble make trouble yeah you don't make trouble <laughs> you don't do trouble it's off it's not right yeah it doesn't sound right a lot of noise i think this one is quite obvious yeah don't do a lot of noise uh, that doesn't sound right don't make a lot of noise then uh, noise make um ex excuse Make, make an a. excuse, yes. We don't do an excuse, we make an excuse. Do one's duty and the last one? Do wrong. Do wrong. Uh, okay, so uh, these are some um, of the common mistakes, yeah, because we feel that they are the same. There's nothing uh, that differentiate these two, but actually they do because they cannot be paired with the same words yeah they get along with certain words but not all so you have to choose your word your pair very carefully yeah to make sure that they sound natural okay okay let's um play a little game okay like this yeah I would like you to think of one word that can fill up all the blanks here. Test. Yeah, who is that? Honey. 
Ah, okay, well done. Yeah, because you say take a test, retake a test, fail a test, pass a test. Okay, so you can see that take, um, test can go with all these words. Yeah. So this is also collocation. I'm, I'm just like, um, because we, we have this and then we say, what is the word that can fill up all these uh, blanks? So you know, it is good get a good score on a test so the answer is test right so let's try another group okay let's play because if it is in class i will put you in two groups and then we are going to have a competition <laughs> but here uh, i cannot see you uh, how are we going to make turn it into a competition we can't okay so you just try and try to uh, figure out the answer yeah okay i will just show you okay what one word can fill up all the blanks job yay <laughs> is that the same person answering yes oh, very good so please uh, i think i have 21 items so please put a tick how uh, please keep a count of how many you got right yeah it may not just be you uh, answering i think other people are also trying to answer yeah so please note down how many you get correct after this and let me know <laughs> okay so here you the answer is test uh, how about this Oh, sorry. Oh. Anybody? I think this is a bit more or less obvious. Wedding. Why why not very confident? <laughs> Is there anything that, 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 that make you less confident? Which one that you are not quite sure of? The white wedding one. Oh, okay. White <laughs> wedding, yeah. You are not sure whether it, they are paired well or not. Yeah, actually you are right. Wedding is the answer. Yeah, very good. Wedding party, wedding day, shotgun wedding, white wedding, and wedding ring. Okay, next group of words. Oh. Anyone? Automatically, when you have a high, what is the first word that comes to your mind? Or pay the... Usually, the first word that comes to our mind, uh, it shows that these are the common pairs that we always hear. Yeah. So? Pay the... There are many words that can go with pay, yeah? but to fit in to all these words, uh, that is the difficult bit. Anybody would like to try? Price. Yay! Who got it finally? Price. Yes. 
Very good. High price, priceless, pay the price, price out of the market, compare prices. Yeah. Okay, finally, we got the answer. Next. Hmm. I understand some of our brains refuse to work at this time of the day. Eh? <laughs> That's why I just put something where I, I, I thought this is uh, better than asking you to write a proposal. Rain. Hmm? Rain. Rain? Um... Yeah, it can be used. It can be uh, used with Tom. some, but not all. Huh? What is the? Ah, uh, Adawiya answer storm. Ah, uh, Adawiya answered storm. Uh, so she answered. Ask... She answered at the uh, chatting. Oh, okay. I didn't check. Oh, people have been answering in the chat. I didn't check. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Storm is the answer. Yeah, well then, there we are. So you said rain, oh, similar to storm. Yeah, but we cannot say a, a cloud, a rain cloud uh, can also, but we cannot say whether the rain, that is wrong. Yeah, but whether the storm, yes. So rain, you can say a heavy rain, get caught in a rain, yes. A rain cloud, yes. But whether the rain cannot, whether the storm. So storm is the answer. Yeah, so. Ah, okay, there's another one. The, I think maybe this is the obvious one. The calm before the storm. That is the expression. The calm before the storm. Uh, something is brewing, brewing, yeah? Stirring underground. And uh, so that is what it means. Okay, another set. I think this one is not that difficult. When you look at the word school, what comes to your mind straight away? Bus. Yay. <laughs> Correct. Anybody answer? Uh, all right. So it's the bus, yeah? Take the bus, on the bus, school bus, bus stop, bus someone in. We only have all the female participants. <laughs> oh, how about the gentleman? Are you still here? Don't you want to try your luck in answering? Ah, I think the gentleman will know. Of course, the ladies will know it immediately. <laughs> Let's see. Pool. Ah, the we are knows it very well, yeah. Well then, so <laughs> this one because unrequited, unrequited love, first in first love, be in love. Ah, this one. All's fair in love and war. That is the expression, yeah. That uh, is quite common. Idiomatic expression, all's fair in love and war. Ah. Mine. Wow, that one is so obvious. <laughs> How many have you got right? I think you have done very well. Hi. Ah, because uh, uh, is that Aisha who, who is talking to me? Honey. Ani, Ani, ah, because ah uh, because um the the one registered here Fatima's iPad. Okay, so you have done very well. Eh? So keep that momentum <laughs> going. So lose your mind, blow your mind, mind over matter, never mind criminal mind.
idea? Um, almost there. Not the best answer. Okay. <laughs> advice. Yeah, you cannot say you take my idea. Please take my idea. Please take my advice. Listen to some. Okay, so it is advice. Uh, that is the, the the best answer. Yeah, get advice, give advice, take my advice. Ah, uh, I think this one. Everybody knows the answer. Traffic? Yay, yes. Every traffic stuck in traffic. <laughs> Fire. Yay, yes. Yeah, that one ready in fire. Do you have the answer in the chat box? Injury, is that for this set of wound? For this. Uh, An open wound. Yeah, injury and wound, yeah, they, they may be very similar, but we cannot say um, mortally because here, yeah? mortally injured um, and open we don't say an, an open injury we say an open wound but a minor injury can a minor wound also can yeah a serious injury can a serious wound also possible here because it's it, it, mortally wounded because it cannot be uh, mortally injured they don't go well uh, war wounds yes yeah so injury can fit in some but not all but wound can fill up all the boxes how about this family one? yeah <laughs> Some people have not had the chance to read and you already shout out the answer <laughs> because it is so obvious to you. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. So extended family, family planning. Ah, I think this one is quite obvious. Time. Mm, time, take your time, just in time, time flies, bad time, have a good time. Do you have the answer in the chat box? Mm. Just now advice, yeah? This one? Mm, it is harsher than comment yeah somebody wrote their comment but it is more harsh than comment you are warm already mm. 
Serial pain. Uh, that is very cold. <laughs> We always want people to give us constructive rather than negative. What? Mm -hmm. Criticism. Ah, yes. <laughs> Criticism, yeah? Uh, so comment, you, you, some, another person uh, put in the answer as comment. So comment can be true to some, but not, you can say constructive, constructive comments, yeah? But uh, severe uh, come under comment cannot, yeah? Uh, baseless comment, uh, it, they don't go well so but the answer is criticism severe criticism come under criticism constructive criticism i thought that one is so obvious yeah we don't want um, negative comments we want constructive criticism do we have some more huh. game yeah game yes fair game play game win a game ada we are answer point yes at the chat box <laughs> okay well done that is the answer yeah Point, make a point, a valid point, point out someone's mistake, pointless, make a point of doing something. I think we just have a few, or I think this is the last one. Okay, this one, everybody should know. Money. Yay. <laughs> easy money. I want easy money. I don't want dirty money. I want to make money. Don't want to lose money. Maybe I want to spend money. <laughs> what are lagi? Crime. Yeah. Is it crime? Crime, yeah. The last, this one. Crime of passion. Wow. Crime and punishment. Fit the crime. Commit a crime. Ser a serious crime. Okay. That's the end of our game. <laughs> okay. So how did you do? Uh, you don't have to tell me. Yeah. You just uh, tell yourself. How many did you get right? Or how many did you manage to answer? Um, so uh, I'm sharing you this is to, 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 to make you aware. Yeah, There are things that may appear to be very similar, but actually they cannot be used together. And when you use them, um, it, it, it's not really wrong, Yeah, but not um, suitable. You, it's not supposed to be used in that way. Then people can feel that it is not quite right, especially to the native speakers. Yeah. So because the language that you are using do does not sound natural to them. Uh, yeah. Then so perhaps um, this is the time when you you can be more aware of it, and later on when you are writing in English, perhaps you know you will take note of this. Um, then you can say that, uh, you know, you have acquired the level that you want to acquire in terms of your English proficiency. So the more natural it is, the better you are at that language. Okay, when we uh, write English and all comes very natural to us, then it shows that we're very good at that language already. Yeah? It's the same with all languages. 
we know when somebody is using Malay, you know, and sometimes we laugh when when other when the foreigners want to speak Malay to us, but they don't quite use the word correctly. Yeah, you can feel it, and we laugh. Uh, this is the same reaction that we may get. Yeah, when we are not using, we are not aware of this, and we use it when we talk to the native speakers. Hmm. Okay. Anybody uh, would like to say anything about this? To ask any question? To comment? No. Okay. I'm going to close this set of slides. Screen sharing has stopped. Oh, okay. I thought I'm still sharing. Okay, uh, are we still here? Can you still bear with me for the next one hour? Inshallah. Inshallah. Only 13 left. Uh, I do not know how many watching me over the YouTube. Is there anyone still with me? But anyway, um, but uh, the next thing that I would like to do with you would be going back to the uh, Padlet page that we have used earlier. Okay, I want to go back to what you have written on that page. But if I hope some of you are still here so that we can develop on what you have already written there. Because um, Okay, I have more here, yeah? Because we do, I do not know the owner of this. Ah, has it at the Hani Rahman? Oh, okay, Alhamdulillah. We have the owner read, names written. Okay. Um, we have looked at Hazix. We have looked at the e document thingy just now. Okay. Uh, we have not looked at electricity saving. We have not looked at the rest. Yeah? So we have electricity saving, disposal of broken equipment, and case one. Okay, let's uh, have a look at what you have shared here. Uh, our brother Rahman from KLM has written here. Okay, so this is about saving electricity. During the, this pandemic, okay, well, let's just read it.
Okay. Uh, do we have uh, our brother Rahman still with us this afternoon? Is brother Rahman is still around? Um, actually, I would like to ask questions because it is, I do not know, maybe it's my fault, but it's not quite clear. What is it that you are, what is the problem that you're highlighting here? Anybody would like to try to help me understand this? Brother Rahman is at YouTube. Oh, okay. So that's why he cannot be responding, yeah? Okay. Uh, here is the problem is electricity is i i, I suppose uh, the problem is not saving electricity yeah um, the problem is electricity is not being used wasted yeah electricity wasting of electricity uh, that is the problem because saving electricity is not a problem so that is what you want to try to do yeah the solution to the problem is to save electricity better because right now we don't really do it effectively okay i think that is what uh, the issue is trying to raise here yeah the problem uh, electricity has been wasted uh, even though uh, during uh, you know this time when they were not supposed to be students that many students and also staff and yet uh, you are still using a lot of electricity. The electricity bill is still very high. Uh, I think that is what the problem is. Yeah, And therefore, um, you want to try to save electricity better. Yeah, To try not to waste electricity so much so that you can control the, the bill. I think you will be able because you think that uh, it should be lower. And yet, you know, it is still very high. Uh, so that is the problem. Um, so a, a lot of so the solution here, which is very, very, look very technical. So you, you must be a, a one of the technical person here, I think, yeah, working. Cannot be admin staff, must be the technical uh, person in charge looking at the technical issue. Pemboras itu saudara syaitan. Okay, this is a very good, um support yeah to to uh, you come up to support with all the verses from the quran here uh, when we see that uh, you use all these verses from the quran that we know that we have to yeah but but i think uh, this kind of thing is very applicable with in in iuim I, I, yeah <laughs> but if you try to put all these verses of the Quran to support your argument uh, when you are writing for those who do not really understand our religion, maybe they don't really want to see it there. Yeah? So it depends on who our reader is. So I think this is perfectly all right because you are writing it within the context of IUM, within the context of uh, fellow Muslims. Yeah? Um, okay, so thank you for that. Okay, so that is the uh, issue with electricity being wasted, yeah, or not being uh, monitored effectively. Disposal of broken equipment.
Hmm. Okay, so Sister Rashida here um, has explained the situation. Yeah, well, said that, okay, the broken uh, equipment, which has not been disposed of properly, yeah, um, it become a sore to the eyes or, you know, broken equipment and also hazards to people. Uh, you also provide some background information of the situation, yeah. Okay, so thank you for that. Okay, so you have already illustrated the problem quite well there. Yeah, and um, so you have completed the first part of the proposal. Yeah, you have tackled the issue. You have tackled the part where you have to outline or detail out the problems very clearly and very effectively so that people can understand can relate to the problem that you are experiencing okay now uh, let's move to the um before we look at the solution okay we have to move uh, look at the objective of the proposal yeah so you have identified the issues you have already come up with the solution for the, to to combat the problem okay so before uh, you really can explain the, the 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 second part which is the procedure the methodology and all the details planning scheduling and things yeah you have to come up with the objective okay so it doesn't matter whether you are still here or not. Okay. So if you look at the first one here, Brother Hazik's um, problem, okay, uh, about the non ergonomic chairs that, uh, you know, seats that we have to sit on. Hmm. So this is, these are all the references. Very good. So we don't. You have taken out the solution, yeah, here. Uh, so now it's only the problem. So what is the solution? Who still have the solution, have not deleted the, that part? I, I know that I asked you not to have the solution. Okay, never mind. We can try to figure out the solutions ourselves, yeah. But okay, so after reading the pro about the problems, yeah, uh, after you have understood the seriousness of the problem, now you need a solution. Okay, so what could be the solution here? So here, all these uh, non very um, suitable chairs have to be replaced. Yeah, should be repaired or changed with the new ones and it's been used for quite some time for action needs to okay so what do you think is the objective of the proposal following the the problem that has been explained there brother Hazir, are you still here Okay, if he's not here, um, how about the others? If we were to write down the objective of the proposal, what is it going to be? To do what? The objectives, yeah, where we come to the part where we have to write down the objective, what could be the suitable objective for this problem? The solution is for um, the university or for the department to buy or repair all these, you know, um, non-suitable chairs. So what is going to be the purpose of the proposal, you think? Hmm. 
the purpose or the objective or the proposal. Okay, my connection is not okay, Doctor. Allah, what a pity. You can write it on the screen. What would be the objective after going through all the effort of outlining the problem very well? Oh, so I joined through YouTube. Anybody, anyone else? What would be the objective you think of this proposal? I mean, the suitable objective to write in that proposal. The objective of the proposal is or are number one, two, Anybody would like to try? To reduce broken chairs. Okay. To reduce broken chairs. Is that all? To get approval to purchase new chairs with better quality. Okay, that is, um, if you look at the two uh, possible objectives, one, to reduce broken chairs, that is very in immediate, yeah, you want to reduce broken chairs, um, yes, but that is not what the ultimate goal, right, uh, the ultimate goal would be maybe the second one, to get approval, to purchase new chairs with better quality, to reduce possibilities of injuries. Um, okay, so I, I'm glad that you came up with this. Um, I think all of you can see what is in the chat box, right? Huh. Because we have three suggested objectives here. One, to reduce broken chairs. One, to get approval to purchase new chairs with better quality. And the number three, to reduce possibilities of injuries. Uh, can we accept all the three or maybe one is better than the other or one is more applicable, more suited to the uh, nature of the problem? Any comments <laughs> from anybody who can see this and understand what is happening? I think Adabia answer is more suitable. Hmm. Who 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 wrote that? Aziz. Oh, is the owner of that. <laughs> Why do you think Adabia's answer is more suitable? And then we also cannot talk directly. Yeah, you have problem with your mind. Because I would like you to justify your answer, please, if possible. Yes, doctor. Okay. If we make the proposal, of course, we want it to be approved to change to repair the chairs. Ah, okay. Yes, I think it's good to have this discussion. Yeah, but it's a bit slow because we have to wait for people to write it down. So it's not immediate. Uh, 
if you were to wait for me, it will take even longer because I am even slower at typing. But, but this discussion is very, very uh, beneficial. Yeah, because um, uh, sometimes, okay, we do make, uh, we, we, we are still confused. Uh, what to write for the objective? Yeah. Here we can see they, they are they all can be objectives of this uh, proposal given the nature of the problem yeah but uh, for the actual proposal what we have in mind when we are writing down the objective is um, what is it that we want to to get out of this proposal yeah so what is the ultimate goal so here in in um, in getting the approval. All this will also happen, become a reality, yeah. Because um, uh, so, uh, if we get the approval, all the other objectives can be achieved as well. Ah, okay. So, which one that will cover all those the other objectives? So, in this case, uh, yes, I think uh, the weas answer is better. Yeah, the objective that the the wea has written there because. Um, yeah, yeah. The proposal is to replace the broken chairs. So, how are you going to replace the broken chairs? Because you want to get approval, yeah, so that the uh, broken chairs can be replaced. That is the objective. But how are you going to do it? Uh, okay, that is yet to be explained in the uh, body section. But for the objective, uh, you know not just uh, to reduce the number uh niha kan reduce possibilities of injuries uh, to reduce broken chairs that one is very specific but uh, a more general um, objective would be this one and inshallah if we if we are successful at getting this, all will follow suit. Yeah? All the rest of this will also happen. Okay, so very good, Alhamdulillah. We had a very uh, good discussion going just now Okay, for this. And okay, the second one here for the a lack of skill in handling me. Ah, it's already written here. The objectives of the proposal are to request MSD to provide online training for e-documents and e-flash management and handling by qualified speaker for staff to enhance their skills in this field, to provide guidelines of managing and handling e-documents for staff. Ah, I think these are very good. Okay, very well spelled out of the objectives. Yeah, you you make it very clear uh, of what is it that you want to achieve, or what is it that you aim the proposal to be able to to accomplish. Yeah, to request MSD to provide online training for e documents because you you have outlined all the problems. Yeah, the problems are due to not having enough skills to manage all these e, e uh, files and all those things. And therefore, you are asking MSD to provide training. Okay? And then the details of the training, okay, what kind of training that you want, um, you will detail out, you will outline very clearly in the body of your uh, proposal. Yeah. So very good. Honey. Where is honey? I'm here, Doctor. Ah, okay. So honey, well done. <laughs> so Thank the you. problem, the objectives are very well specified. Okay, so we know and they mesh very well. Very good. Thank you, Doctor. Okay. Elect, oh, elect, electricity waste, wastage. Um, do we have the um, objective? Brother Ramad, YouTube. 
So what is the objective of this proposal? Oh, okay, you already have the solution here. Yeah? Have an online building monitoring system, BMS, uh, switch on of energy, uh, and then make continuous campaign. So what is the objective of the proposal? For this particular problem. I think it's about creating continuous awareness among staff about the uh, 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 about the consumption of electricity. Okay, you want to raise the awareness, yeah, uh, to get people more aware about um, being. Uh, energy saver okay so you want them to be able to save energy better electricity better mm. yes that could be the um, bonus outcome of this proposal yeah but not the intended one i mean not to not the 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 the, the a more specific one would be Because campaign and talk. So the proposal is for for whom? Who is this proposal for? Okay. Given the nature of the problem, who should be receiving this proposal? In our proposal, we cannot be a, a too general yeah because when it's general too many parties will be involved perhaps um, our chance of getting of making it happen may be lesser yeah so we have to tackle the issue uh, we have to be focused on what is the exact issues that we want to tackle what is the problem that we want to solve yeah and when we provide the solution we cannot be um, suggesting all the solutions that are uh, available yeah we have to decide which one will be the best solution for that or, or the best um, action to take uh, with this in mind then our objective will be very um, very on point yeah it it it, it matches very well with the nature of the problem that we have described but of course before we are able to do that when we write before we write the document we have to know who is the audience who is going to read this proposal this proposal is for whom yeah so we can understand uh, who that our audience is and therefore we will be able to uh, mesh who they are with what we are going to tell them okay so in this case if you have the problem about uh, electricity not being safe very well okay being wasted who should be getting this proposal you think the development is it Again, uh, again sorry. the development unit, I guess. But then uh, there's uh, there's something in the sentences uh, uh -huh. uh, that say, since we already have the BMS, continuous discussion between IIU and user and SMW property Selatan Syndrome Berhad Authority is required to constantly optimize electricity saving. But there is not the not. I did not mention the discussion about what. Macam, uh, dia tergantung kat situ lah. Kuit, tak tahulah. Sebab 
everything uh, macam everything else yang uh, macam BMS tu dah ada uh, dah ada and the campaign was done untuk awareness but yang itulah tapi tak tahu nak nak cakap discussion on what ah uh, itulah, ha, itulah. Uh, this is very good because a lot of options yeah? a lot of suggestions on how to overcome the problem but it's not clear you are giving the suggestions to whom This proposal is written for for whom? Yeah. So if we know who our audience is, okay, and what is his role or what is the the the, the responsibility of that person, then perhaps the, the then we can fit our proposal, uh, the objective of the proposal, better easily, yeah, easier. Uh, because here we do not know so you have identified the problems and you have also suggested uh, the many possible ways of solving it yeah uh, actions that can be taken um, so if we were to come up with the objective of the proposal what is it going to be given the information we, that we already have here so the objective of the proposal is to Which out of these actions uh, would be the most workable or the most effective means to be more um, better at saving the energy, uh, saving electricity? Which is the option that you have listed here? Because some of this I don't understand, yeah. BMS able to remotely monitoring system. I cannot relate to that because I have no idea what it is to remotely automatically switch on or off high energy usage electrical appliances. Huh. Oh, okay. So the proposal is to okay do you have anybody here okay building management system okay Anyone would like to try to come up with the objective that is suitable for the kind of uh, problem that has been identified here? I think this one is good ending, yeah? If you were to write the proposal, then you can say, indeed, as Muslim, we are obliged not to waste and follow the footstep of the devil. Ah. Then you will um, end your proposal with a bomb, you know, <laughs> because um, you startle the audience, ah, the reader. Uh, yeah. 
Well, you don't want, uh, definitely we don't want to be following in the footstep of shaitan. So they, they will be affected by your last sentence. That it will create a very good effect to the reader. So anyway, so perhaps uh, objective for this um, to implement a new, uh, a more effective, uh, a newer system to monitor, uh, uh, to remote to monitor remotely or something like that, yeah? Or if you want, um, if you were to create awareness, then perhaps then you have to mention the problem about student uh, awareness is not there. Uh, so you cannot, um, if you you have not mentioned in the problem uh, about awareness, okay, that people do not have um, awareness about this or they don't bother, they they don't pay attention they have the uh they don't have upper uh they they don't care about it uh, then perhaps uh you want to create awareness yeah but here in the problem you didn't mention about awareness so the objective cannot be creating awareness So if you want to to have, uh, if you, ya Allah, ya Tuhanku, what happened? If you want uh, to mention uh, the objectives as to creating awareness, then you have to say the problem is lack of awareness. Then that is the reason why you want to create awareness. But I don't think um, you have mentioned anything about uh, people not having the awareness, yeah? about saving energy. All right, um, the next one, disposable of broken equipment. Okay, so what is it? Okay, we have all this equipment lying around everywhere. Okay, they are everywhere. They are not being disposed of very well, properly. So, it has become an eyesore, yeah? Um, mainly due to the inability of repair equipment creates. So, why the program of hiring or mobile to access the program will be one by looking to trade in, beside cleaning our workspace, okay? These are possible ways to solve the problem from the Kulia to dispose of the broken equipment by hiring a mobile company for quicker and smoother disposal process. Okay, so you have outlined the problem. Okay, so how are we going to solve the problem? We will solve the problem. Okay, so the objective of this proposal is to get the approval. Yeah, so um, uh, approval and the uh, budget also. Yeah, because if we get um, outside agency to help us move clear the broken equipment, the broken parts, the broken company, ready? Uh, equipment then we need budget also yeah they make money okay so good uh, Rashida yeah so that is the objective of your proposal okay any comments any questions so far <laughs> are you still Listening to me, or you're having your cup of coffee already? <laughs> this is a real challenge yeah? when you cannot see your students. Alhamdulillah, still listening. <laughs> still here.
Okay, I think um, I have already gone through the main points of what makes an effective proposal. Yeah, I hope uh, you have, and I mean, you know, my objective uh, has been achieved because I don't think I would be able to focus on everything about um, proposal. Yeah, but what I have done is to highlight certain parts that are important. Yeah, to ensure that the proposal is successful. Um, and uh, where if I were to ask you to come up with a proposal to write the whole proposal, perhaps uh, you know it will take longer. Yeah, and and you may not want to do it. Yeah. But that is the best way to, to see whether you have managed to apply what you have uh, we have shared today. Yeah? Uh, so, um, but um, since I have not asked you to write, okay, even to come up with this is also quite a challenge. Yeah, and to um, persuade you to to write something here, Alhamdulillah, you know, some of you have manage to be persuaded okay maybe it's not you don't really need much persuasion from me you yourself wanted to do it alhamdulillah so you can say alhamdulillah you know i've got people writing here contributing on this pilot so we can work on that yeah alhamdulillah i'm very very grateful for your commitment and your contribution making this class successful if not then i will die much earlier because I don't get uh, the desired response from you. Yeah? So, so Alhamdulillah, I have here, um, which um, have been very helpful in, 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 in helping me to explain what I'm trying to get across to you yeah, today. Uh, so if you have any questions, okay, this is the time for you to ask me question. Connection problems, yeah. This is another challenge, yeah. The internet problem and all those things. I I really can't wait for us to see each other face to face. Um. So no question, no comments. Hakim? Hakim is here. Hakim, uh, I do not have anything much to continue with. Okay? Huh? Perhaps I can um, conclude. Is it okay? okay? Share? Okay. Sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, Alhamdulillah. Okay. I hope you have learned something from the sharing session that we have today. Okay, I hope I, 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 I do not know how much of a help I have been, but I have tried to, to, to highlight to you some of the um, things that are important to be aware of about writing a good proposal. Yeah? Uh, so uh, the, in the earlier session, we have looked at the theories. Okay? I have um, discussed, I have shown you uh, the um, uh, components of a proposal okay they may they may not be exactly the same okay uh, they may not be uh, one standard template that we can use but the items that we have to include in the proposal are the same it may not be in the same order but the important components are the same yeah so uh, the most important part would be the problem and the solution yeah and we also have to be clear of what the objective that we have to put there it has to match the problem that we have explained and of course the solution cannot be too many to to make it uh, workable okay to make it successful we have sometimes we have to be very focused with the problem and the more focused the problem is the more people can be clear of the problem then um, the, the best solution can be provided yeah because we know exactly what the problem is then they, we, therefore we can come up with the best solution that can match the problem very well 
So sometimes we don't need to come up with many, many, many solutions. Yeah, but one solution that best uh, to solve all the problems. Uh. So the solution can be uh, very specific. Yeah, we cannot say uh, when we have a lot of options, then perhaps it's very difficult to focus which one that we want to to go for yeah but if we have a very specific solution that we have in mind which is targeted at removing the problem uh, then we know that it's very effective then maybe that is the best solution that we should be coming up with yeah when we are suggesting the in the proposal and um we also have to be uh, more conscious of the language that we are using, okay? Because a proposal is a persuasive document, so it's very different from an inf informative document, yeah? It's like a report is informative, yeah? When you have to write a report about a technical report that you have to produce. So you don't really have to be convincing. You are just stating the facts, yeah? You are just describing what happened, this is what you did, uh, so this is what you share in that documents, but but uh, a proposal you have to do much more than just stating the facts. The fact has to be there, but at the same time you have to be convincing. That is making a proposal a bit more challenging. Yeah. So but we we are in charge of what we write in the proposal and therefore i have also highlighted some of the strategies that we can employ yeah or some of the things that we have to consider when we are writing the proposal so so we look at the language elements what we can do we have to be uh, choosing the right collocation yeah we have to look at Actually, there are a few other th things, but I noticed in the previous training, some of the lectures have also highlighted. I, I do not know whether you have attended the previous session, uh, session, yeah, the training. When we talk about technical communication, we talk about the five C's. Yeah, uh, when we write, we always have to remember of the five C's principle. Uh, I do not know whether you are familiar with this. I thought you are very familiar with that already. Uh, and therefore, I don't touch on that at all. Yeah, but but uh, I think I would like to remind you here, every time when we are writing, especially technical correspondence, yeah, business communication, uh, or workplace co co uh, correspondence, in this case, a proposal, but it's also applicable to all other forms of communication that we do, even um, not just writing, but also uh, orally, okay? We have to go by the five C's, which is every time we have to be clear. Uh, what are the other four C? We have to be clear, we have to be correct, okay? Uh, uh, correct in terms of the grammar, the spelling, and all those things, okay? Uh, C, another C, we have to be courteous, yeah? So we have to be polite, so we have to be courteous. We cannot be rude. We have to be aware of gender sensitivity or, or, um, or um, you know, religions, you know, all those things that are sensitive issues. We have to make sure that we take care of that, okay? We cannot appear to be sexist. We cannot appear to be looking down at other people's religion uh, okay that is the need to be courteous so we have clear uh, correct courteous what are the other two um, concise okay so concise refer is referring to um, if we can say it in three words why should we say it in ten words Ah, okay, ah, so uh, that is um, another thing that we have to consider when writing uh, proposal or any technical reports or letters, you know, for official communication. So we have to be concise. Yeah. So don't waste our energy by using more words than necessary. So go straight to the point. Yeah, if we can be try to be e economical with the words. And if there is a more direct way of expressing it using more simpler words, go for it. Huh, okay, that is the requirement. You have to be concise. That is number four. And the last one, 
so clear, correct, courteous, concise. And the last five, uh, the, the last C, <sighs> forgot now. Anybody can help me? What is the last C? Again, sorry? Is it compassionate? Compassionate? I'm not sure. Uh, uh, I think that is covered by courteous. Let me just check. Yeah, what is the other C? <laughs> I have been teaching my student, but now I don't remember. What is the 5C? Mm. Now, when you try to look for it, you never can find it. Mm, I know there's another C because it's five altogether. Complete. Pardon? Complete. Ah, Alhamdulillah. You are right. Complete. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, thank you so much for that. Complete. Uh, what does it mean? Complete. Uh, you do not leave out the necessary information yeah uh, so if you say you want to order this but you left out um how many you want the quantity so this one uh when uh when you're writing something it has to be complete the information all the important information must be included uh, okay so every time you are writing your an official letter or um, proposal or report okay always keep it at the back of your mind of these five c's uh, every time okay i have to be clear i have to be correct i have to be complete i have to be courteous i have to be concise then inshallah all your documents will be tip top okay uh, because uh, you you put a lot of care into coming up with the documents yeah a proposal it can be proposal it can be all the other documents inshallah yeah so uh maybe we are going to not be very successful all the time yeah but inshallah if every time when you write you have to write something and you always think reflect on these five c's then inshallah your documents will be much improved yeah because uh, you have taken care of all these five principles and you have tried your best to make sure that you follow it, then inshallah, you know, your writing will be um, accepted all the time. Now, that is what we try to achieve in when we write something, of course, right? Uh, so, um, if there is no question, so I think, um, Alhamdulillah, thank you so much again. I think I will um, stop uh, my session today. Yeah. So, um, Hakim, it's back to you. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, and thank you very much for the uh, program. And now, uh, again, if anyone have any question you guys can leave at the chat box or turn on your mic or you guys can email directly to the speaker maybe doctor you can uh, share to us from uh, for us your email inshallah the speaker will answer it later doctor yeah. if the yes. participant want the slide before you show is it okay is it okay? Yes. yeah how do so i you, uh i pass the slide to you boleh juga can okay. all right uh okay uh if they don't have any question from youtube also don't have uh, no question uh before we end this program i have a few reminder first regarding uh, registration for your uh, for your information all the program uh, in uia whether physical or online program you guys need to I'm in registration 
through I attend. And second is evaluation form. For evaluate this training and qualify a participant to get the CTD point. Last but not least, participants who are not completing this two reminder, registration and evaluation form will not getting any CTD point for this program. Evaluation, uh, evaluation form will send uh, after this. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your participation for this program. Uh, you guys I've can watch this my, program. Um, my email address, yeah, if anybody would like to <laughs> contact me. Okay, mfarida at iam.edio.my. Okay, so uh, if you guys want to watch uh, this program, you guys can watch uh, this program or previous program at our YouTube channel, IUM MSD Competency Development. And if the content benefits you, please consider to like, subscribe, and share our channel to other. I hope you guys enjoy the program and stay safe and follow all the SOP. So that's it. Uh, before we end the session, uh, we end the session with Tasbih Kafarah and Surah Walas. Subhanallah, Bihamdi, Subhanallah, Bihamdi, Kashin, Wanda, Ila, Ila. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you, Doctor, again. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm just share the link for evaluation form. So for evaluation form, uh, we just open it uh, only for 24 hours. So after that, we will not open it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Hakim. Welcome, Dr.